Can you have them ready a bit early on or we won't have a lot of time? Oh, you you want me to put my skates on, do you? So you, you can go off lining Mother Walker's still, is that it? It's the heck as like. It's a selection, isn't it? We're having a flipping meeting. What election? The shop steward. I thought Ivy Tilsley was your shop steward. She is, but she was never elected, was she? Only by herself. And according to this Pauline Stringer, we'll be in a lot stronger position, you know, if she's got the official union back in behind her. But to do that, she's got to be voted in. What's the point of an election if there's only one candidate? Ah, but there ain't, you see, cos Ida's putting up an all. What, Ida Clough? Yeah, that's right. Well, I didn't think she was interested in union matters. You are, eh? I think she's gone a bit power mad, you know, since we'll let her decide what to have on her sandwiches. <laughs> hey, have you never been interested in such things? Me? No, danger, kid. Only thing I'm interested in at dinner time is how much corn dog there is on my sandwiches. <laughs> so think on. I'll see ya. <laughs> You don't eat much, do you? No, I never was one for a big breakfast, Mr Sharple. Big breakfast? You've had nothing. Oh, I've had quite enough. Two cups of coffee and I'm ready to take on the world. Oh, I thought I could smell bacon. You couldn't and the tea's all gone as well. I'm quite capable of making my own breakfast. Nobody said you'd have to. Though how some folk can lie in bed half the day, I'll never know. And you can take that hurt look off your face. You weren't the one that spent the night down here. Well, whose fault was that? Well, it wasn't entirely mine, was it? No, it happened not. You're the only one that can get rid of her, though, by making sure that the flat gets finished. And the sooner that happens, the happier we'll all be. What the hell are you doing here? I work here, remember? Not to the point. How did you get in? Yeah, well, we won't go into that, eh? Well, never mind how you got in, but don't make a habit of it, eh? Because if anyone sees you climbing over that gate, it might give them ideas themselves. Well, I just thought, what's the point in being outside when I could be in here doing something useful? You will have a cup of tea, I take it. Yeah, go on. Flaming bills. There is one that might be interesting. The white one. Bell shores. Could be our lucky day. Done. It is. That mean I get paid then? It does. 30 quid? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, I know that's what you said, like, but... Look, if there's something bothering you, let's be having it, eh? Well, I just thought the job might be worth a bit more, since I did it on my own, you know. How do you work that out? Well, I do know how much the job's worth, you know. Oh, do you? Well, I went round to Belshaw's, didn't I? Yeah, of course you did. What happened? Well, they said they put a cheque in the post, and there it is, a cheque for £100. Now, it doesn't take no ba brain of Britain to work out that that's not quite a fair division of capital. You don't think so, eh? Well, it's a pity you don't know a bit more about it, isn't it? Like the interest I've got to pay on loans to buy gear while I'm waiting for money to come in, like this. Like the rent I've got to pay on this property, like tea that you drink for now. Yeah, I never thought of that. No, you don't, because it doesn't flaming concern you, that's why. But I'll tell you something for nothing, mate. If you poke your nose into things that don't concern you in future, you'll be out of those gates so fast they'll see the dust five miles away. Well, you got your money, didn't you? Yeah, I got me money and you get yours and all 30 quid. And if you don't like it, you know what you can flaming do. You're only throwing in for it because you think it might give you a bit of good win. I put it in for it because I happen to think unions are democracies. Not a dictatorship. <laughs> Get a old comics have you been reading? Oh, belt up, Vera. Hey, I thought you were hoping to win this election. There's no hoping about it. Ah, uh, well, you want to watch that tongue of yours, don't you? I mean, how would Margaret Thatcher have gone on, telling people to belt up? Girls in here, if they feel they want to change, I think they've got a right to have one. I'll tell you something else and all. There's more than one in here I think you've had your own way for far too long. Well, isn't it flipping marvellous? Things I've done for you lot, I've seen you through strikes, lockouts, victimisation, the lot, and a fat lot of thanks I get for it. I hope you realise what you let me in for. It's in your own interest. Yeah, so you keep saying. But for your information, things haven't worked out too bad the way they are. It'll work much better when you've got everything on a proper footing. <laughs> you don't know Ivy Tilsy like I do. She's bad enough as it is. Without having the official seal of approval slapped on her. And what makes you so sure Ivy Tilsley will win? Well, you tell me she won't and I could get interested. Proving my point. What point? That when it comes down to it, it's a matter of personalities. Not relations between management and workshop, but a personal battle between you and Mrs Tilsley. How can you look at anything from an objective point of view, either of you? Oh, thanks, love. 
tell me something. Go on. Who do you think is going to win? What I think doesn't matter. Whoever wins will be the democratically elected representative of the girls in this shop. That's what matters. With the official backing of the union. Right. And I'm happy to go along with that, whoever it is. I take it you'll do the same. I haven't got much choice, have I? Hello. Hello. And where's your keeper then? Hey, Tracy. Oh, she's at Playgroup. Do you know the person who invented them ought to get the Nobel Prize for service to Mum's nerves? Yeah, no way. She's at a smashing age. Oh yes. If you call Gerin into everything, being at a smashing age. <laughs> there you are. Will you put that up for me for this afternoon? Yes, of course. No problem. And I will pay you for last week's while I'm here. Hey, she'll be able to tell you with the filing, won't you? When you get this business of yours off the ground. When we do. Not much luck, then. I wouldn't exactly say that. No luck at all would be nearer the point. Oh, well, I'll put the word round, love. There's one or two councillors say they might be interested, like... I mean, these things take time, you know, like everything else. They do say the first 30 years are the worst, when you're starting up on your own, you know. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. You're a great help, you are. <laughs> See ya. Hello. 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 Oh, uh, Mrs Walker says, uh, have you got any of that patty and page stuff she gets, you know? Oh, yes. Just a minute. Hey, you took some stick last night, didn't you? Oh, well, I asked for it, didn't I, Alf? Not often I get a decent night out. Better still when it's in the line of business, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? I'll tell you what, though. That here at the Flying Horse, it's a bit on the gassy side. A bit on the pricey side, too, from what I've heard. Oh, well, I was all right there. Tony Hayes, you know. He saw me all right. Oh, well, he's taken over there, hasn't he? Yeah, it's him that's behind this uh, barber shop quartet like we're oh. doing, you know. Yeah, they're not half bad from what I've heard. Well, it's not really my cup of tea, you know, but the customers seem to like it. Place were fairly even. Professionals, are they? Are they actors like a bunch of regulars having a bit of a giggle? Ah, well, I wouldn't have thought it was too difficult, you know, getting some willing lads for a thing like that. Ah, well, that's what down to me, weren't it, you know, opening my big gob. How do you mean? Well, they were getting up my nose, madly, not about how marvellous they were, bragging about them. I said, it's nothing that the Rovers return can't do if we put our mind to it. What's he say to that? Laughed his socks off, said we couldn't. And he already said he'd put the beer up if we could, you know. Well, that sounds like fighting talk to me, Fred. Ah, his beard would be right, but I mean, where are we going to get a bab shop quartet? Shouldn't be all that much trouble. Four's not a lot to find. There's Alfie if you want. Hey, hang on a minute. Well, you could do something like that. He used to be a choir boy, or so you tell me. Oh, yeah, that was years ago, though. I, uh, I wouldn't mind having a bash myself. There you are. You're halfway there already. Yeah, we are, aren't we? I'm getting sick of this, I am honest. I mean, whose daft idea would it to have this election? We were all right as we were before. Oh, so the penny's dropped, has it? I might have expected that from you. Hey, now, don't you start. Start? She's never flaming well stopped. Look, I don't mind you having a chat among yourselves, but they can hear you lot the other side of Weatherfield. Where's well, this election, isn't it? We never had all this aggro before, did we? I see. Well, if that's the way you feel, you can always call it off, you know. Carry on muddling through your own tip-pot little way for the rest of your working lives, if that's what you want. Don't you want to have a proper say in what goes on round it? Yes. We do have a say. If we don't like Summit, we tell him. Aye. And he listens if he happens to feel like it. The difference is, he won't have any choice when you've got a properly elected steward, will he? No. I'm surprised you're the only one round here that can't see it. Yeah. What might it all? You'll go along with her. Yeah. Listen, Ivy Tilsley, I've told you there's more than one not happy in here the yeah, way things true. are on. More than not one by a long chore. Oh, change flipping record. Hold it. Listen, I reckon if we're going to have this election, we'd better have it quick before the flipping yeah. blood bath. Yeah. Suits me. You can have it now for all I care. You see, there she goes again making decisions. Have you any objection to having it today, Ida? I suppose not, but it's nice to be asked, isn't it? Right. Well, I suppose we could have the vote straight after your meeting at dinner time. All oh, right. Yes. Listen, we'll have to have a dinner hour. Yes. All right, then. As soon as you come back, how's that suit? Yes. Suits me. Ida? We're having none of this silly business with Anza like I'm in favour of it. Listen, a show of Anza's has always been good enough before. Well, it's not good enough now. A secret ballot's where I want. Yes. Well, if that's what you want. Yes. 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 Ivy? As long as it's not our county votes. Oh, hey, well, what about Mr Baldwin? He could do it. Hey, he's management. Well, I suppose I could do it. Well, that's I've no objection. Right, that's settled then. Half past one in here. And may the best girl win. Yeah. Well, we we are. Well, I mean, 
beats me what you find to do with yourself all day long. If I didn't have a job to come to, oh, I'd go around the bend in a week. It beats going up at half past five every morning, I can tell you that. Yeah, but just wait till the novelty's worn off, you'll be bored out of your mind. I'll risk it. I'll think of you when I'm roasting in the sauce. Oh, get her. <laughs> See you later. Yes. That is, if I don't get bored to death. Oh, <laughs> yes. Do you know, I don't think I've seen Mrs. Fairclough looking so well for a long time. No, well, she doesn't much to worry her at the moment, has she? Maybe not. But to go through what she's gone through and to pick up the pieces so quickly, well, it does command a certain amount of admiration, don't you think? Well, if that's your yardstick, Mrs. Walker, I reckon you won't be able to find a pedestal big enough to stick me on. Ah, but then you had so much more practice, Mrs. Tanner. If you want me, Elizabeth, dear, I shall be in the bag. Yes, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Same again, love. Yes. And not too much ice. I've just had enough heaped on me to last me a flame in lifetime. <laughs> hey, give us a couple of pints of rubbish, Fred, when you're ready with it. I'll get them. So you trying to buy me off? No, well, you got paid, I got paid. Everybody's happy. Let's forget about it, eh? I don't think bell shows will be, mate. Nobody really likes to have the heavy mob on their doorstep, you know. Yeah, well, that's their problem, innit? It's mine and all. They're a very good firm. Right. Well, they can't be that good. They don't pay, do they? You got a point there. Oh, they're just the fellas I want to see. Oh, it's your lucky day then, Fred, isn't it? Well, you know this uh, flying horse manager, don't you? Little fellow with a mouth like a windy clean his bucket. The same. What about him? Thrown down the gauntlet, hasn't he? What gauntlet? Well, you know this excuse I've got for a, what, a barber shop quartet, he reckons. He reckons we can't match him. Well, I reckon he's dead right, you know. <laughs> oh, don't chuck the towel in so and so. I mean, what have we got to lose? More to the point, what have we got to gain? He's going to put the beer up, innit? You know, if we can ah. better him, like. Well, now you're talking. Well, you can count me out for a start. I reckon we're better off without him, don't you, Fred? Right, well, uh, that's you in then, Eddie, and, uh, and you're out. Definitely. By the way, who else is in the line-up, then? Well, up to now, there's uh, Alf Roberts and yours truly. What, you and Alf Roberts? Too late to change my mind, I suppose. No chance, mate. That's three down, one to go. I reckon we've cracked it. <clears throat> well, you, you took a nice day to part together. I'll set up for you. Well, I've had plenty of practice, haven't I? I don't believe it. No, what's up? Well, it's the first civil word you two said to each other all day. Oh, well, that's always been the way to his heart, through his stomach. Look, don't think you can buy me off with one day to pie, because you can't. Well, how many tater pies does it take, then? You can keep out of this. <laughs> I intend to. I'll see you later. Right, are you going to Rose? No, I'm off to the community centre to chase up the decorator so Mrs Sharples can get her place back. Right, well, don't let me stop you. The feeling is quite mutual, Albert Tatlock, I can assure you. Right, well, I'll uh, see you later, then. All right. It is company here after. I was thinking of popping round for the milk stout later on. Oh, were you? Well, I've changed my mind. I'm off to Legion. You are not off anywhere until you've done the washing up. Hello, Bert, my old pal. Off again. <laughs> Country must be going to the dogs. Don't you start. I'm on tonight, you know, worse luck. <laughs> must be something to be said for being off during the day, though. Oh, there is, but it's me. I can't get used to getting up at dinner time and having ale for me breakfast, you know what I mean? <laughs> Give us half a bit and a lager, will you? Right. Hey, up. The girl's not in yet, then. No, they have. I think they've got some sort of a meeting on across the road. It must be important to be taking this long. Aye, it is, yeah. Hey, Bert. Uh, I don't suppose you sing, do you? Huh? Not for half a bit, I don't No, no, know. hang on. Hang on. I'm, I'm being serious. Yes, so am I. Cheers, kid. No, look, we're getting this quartet up, see, to take on the flying horse, and we're looking for another likely lad. Ah, well, you needn't look at me, sunshine. I'm not a warbler. Well, none of us are, but, I mean, when we get a few pints inside, it's to know the difference. A few pints? I'll tell you summer. You'd need a general anaesthetic to drown my row. <laughs> Who else is in it, any row? Well, up to now, there's me, Alf Roberts and Eddie Yates. Oh. Well, go on, then. I reckon I couldn't do any worse than them, could I? Oh, smashing birds. Tell you what, why don't you come round about two? We'll have a bit of a rehearsal, like, you know. Come round. I'll still be here, won't I? Oh, aye. Cheers. I hope they've landed. Oh, trouble. Hey, thank goodness that's all. Because you'd think we're electing president of the United States. No, you'll knock it, dear. Because whoever wins over there will be more important than president of the United States. With these lasses, anyway. Oh, oh. Hello, Dad. Hello. How's it going then, love? Search me. I don't know whether I'm coming or going anymore. I'm blooming sure they don't. Hey, come on, cheer up. You're going to walk it. Now, that's what I reckon till five minutes since. 
All right, so you don't get back. So what? It's not the end of the world, is it, love? I've got to get back, Bert. I have. I mean, I'm not because of pride of being beaten by either fluff folk like that. I'm right for that job, I know I am. I know Mike Baldwin, I know the way his mind works. I can get things done, you see. I'd have close, you wouldn't get a sniff in. You'd make mincemeat out of her inside a week. Well, look, you just stop worrying yourself, because he's not daft, you know. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he's not as daft as Vera, you know. Hey, uh, there's no laws, there's candidates, can't buy the mates a drink, you know. I reckon I might just do that, Vera. <laughs> <laughs> After election, then perhaps I'll find out who my mates are. <laughs> I don't believe it. They said at Rovers you'd be down here. Well, if I hadn't got a wife who wouldn't leave me alone for ten seconds, I'd still be there. Ah, oh, my heart bleeds for you. How do I look? Now, what am I supposed to say to that? I'll give you a clip. I have just come back from the sauna and my body is glowing like a well-used back boiler and I feel like a million dollars. How do I look? You look a million dollars. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? You know, I thought you being a fella wouldn't notice. Do you reckon you're going to have all this lot in and working by Christmas? Yeah, Eddie's just taking the last of the radiators up there. In a couple of days, it'll be blast off. Oh. Well, I just popped back to tell you I'm going out again. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, yeah. I'll have some shopping to do, and I haven't got an outfit tea. Hey, think on, love. I could murder a steak. You'll be lucky. I was thinking of something like a walnut and celery salad. See, I've decided to take more care of my body, because it's the only one I've got. Did you hear what I said? I did. And uh, you'd eat a walnut and celery salad if I give you one? Yeah, I'm very much in favour of these health foods. Just as long as it's got a dirty, big, juicy steak and a couple of... A pound of chips wrapped round it. Like there are for you, Fred, Fred, I hope you realise that the good name of the Rovers is at stake. Well, that's what we're doing for Mrs Walker. Yes, but not one of you has the first idea about four-part harmony. What's that got to do with it? Look, Fred, if you must go ahead with this challenge, then why don't you try something more traditional, like darts, dominoes? Look, Mrs Walker, anything the flying horse can do, we can do better. Oh, I wish I had your faith. I really do. Right, lads, let's get on with it. Uh, Fred, I've been thinking, perhaps this is not such a good idea after oh. all. Yeah, he could be right, you know, Fred. Well, I've already said we'll take him on. Oh, you got it fixed up? I have. Well, I suppose if it's far enough off, uh, like uh, three years. Monday. Heck. Next Monday? Hey, right. That don't give us much time. Exactly. So if you just stop your yakking, we'll get on with it, eh? Oh, well, that's <laughs> oh, oh, by gum, the Andrew sisters have got nothing on that lot. Well, they wait till they start singing. They make punk rock sound like Gilbert and Sullivan. Hey, listen, just a minute. I mean, we don't know what we're singing or out, do we? Well, sing some what we all know, then we can give you Anne with the chorus. We don't need Anne with the chorus, thank oh. you, Elsie, and we're singing Sweet Adeline. What? Sweet Adeline? Hey, what's the matter with that? It's lovely if it's sung properly. I wouldn't get your hopes up too high if I were you, Betty. <laughs> Sweet Adeline? Do you know, Fred, I think I've underestimated you. You, that is an excellent choice. I suppose it was the rich Edwardian flavour you've gone for. Well, no, it's not that exactly, Mrs. Walker. It's uh, the only music I could fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, come on, let's get on with it. Now, can we have the best of silence, please, for the Rover's Return Barbershop Quartet, please? Sweet hang on, hang on, hang on. After four. Ready? One, two, three. Four. Sweet Adeline, my Adeline, at night, dear heart, for you I find in all my dreams your fair face beams, your flower. Gone. You must have cotton wool in your ears. Hey, Mrs. It wasn't as bad as all that, was it, Mrs. Sharples? You'd be better without him, you know. Hey, now, come on, Mrs. Sharples. Well, suit yourself. You're only asking my opinion. Uh, she has got a good ear for music, you know, Fred. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll try it without you, see what happens. All right. All right, if that's the way you're flipping, want it? Well, you do want us to win, don't you? All right, then, go on. After four, ready? Right, yeah. four. <laughs> Sweet Adeline, my Adeline. At night, dear heart, for you I pine. In all my dreams, your fair face beams. You're the flower of my heart, sweet Adeline. 
like you got a touchline job, Fred. Ah, oh, well, don't worry, because we'll be needing a manager, you know, Fred. And that's not all you're flipping need, is it? You'll need another singer, won't you? If you've got any ideas, let me know. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Oh, 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 oh. Right, let's have a bit of hush, then. The result of the election for shop steward is Ida Clough, 14 votes. Oh, Ivy Tilsley, 17 oh, votes. Oh, so Ivy Tilsley is your elected shop steward. By heck, I've seen happier faces in an undertaker's parlour. Go on, tell her. Oh, I thought it might have something to do with me. Go on, tell me what. Well, I've been to see about your flat, Mr Sharples, and, uh, well, I'm afraid you're going to be stuck with us a little longer than you thought. You know need to tell me that. I've seen the place for myself, haven't I? And I don't know about me being stuck with you. I got the impression that it was the other way around. Well, we didn't ask you to come bloody got us, did yeah, we? Look, I, I know this isn't the ideal situation, Yes, you but... can say that again. And you can take that black look off your face, Albert Tatlock. I never was one to stay anywhere where I wasn't wanted. I'm off first thing in the morning. Oh, that suits me. But hang on a minute. Off where? I've just been on the phone to Mr Foster. He says he'd be very glad to see me. Oh, I see. Well, uh, well, yes, I mean, perhaps you would be better off in St Anne's and happier there, wouldn't you? I'll let you know the minute the decorators move out. You've no need to bother. Sorry, I don't follow you. I've been mucked up by you and your committee for long enough. I'll be the one to say when I come back, if I come back. What do you mean, if you come back? I'm fast coming to the conclusion, Albert Tatlock, that the air up there is much more to my liking than it is round here these days. And you can take that any way you like. Hey, and look, the chef or the singer, you know. No, I reckon Miss Snooker, Dolph. Tried every feather I know. Hey, hang on a minute. Listen, is there anything in the rules that says it's got to be four fellas? Well, not as I know. What are you getting at? Well, I don't know why we didn't think of this before, Thanks but there she is. Large as life and twice as lovely. Oh, no. If word got out I'd been doing a double out with Eddie Yates, I'd never work again. Anyway, she's a professional. They wouldn't wear it. That's even better. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Thanks, love. Sorry, gentlemen. ta ra ta Hey, uh, she might be a professional, but, uh, I know somebody is, isn't. There you are. You see, I said someone to turn up. Hey, you wouldn't be thinking of the same person I'm thinking of, would you? A person not a million miles from here who pushed me into it this morning by any chance. And the same person who said we'd have no trouble in getting a quartet together. You wouldn't. We would, you know. Oh, yes, we would. Oh, me and my big mouth. <laughs> Sounds like a cat's chorus in there. Oh, come on, we're not as bad as all that. Anyway, I should be with them, so what do you want? Uh, just a packet of tea, please, love. Working today, are you? Yeah, I'm just finishing off that central eating for Rita. Can I interest you in an Easter egg? I've got some good ones, and I'll knock some off for you. Oh, Moffat, I sell them in the cabin, don't I? We've got rid of all ours, though. Hey, I think you're going to be stuck with that little one. Oh, I'll get rid of them. That Rita hasn't got one, has she? Nice little Easter present. You don't buy presents at Easter. You don't, you mean. Go on, get it one. So make up for that Christmas present you never got. Ah, oh, don't remind me. Come on, what about this one with a nice little pink rose on top? To you, 30 Bob? All right, go on. <laughs> Hello, the cats have snuffed it. Hey, when is this singing contest, anyway? Oh, it's tonight. Flying horse lot are coming round. Oh, pin. Oh, until she shows up. By the sound of that lot, she's going to succeed, I know. Here, I love. These'll do, yeah? Hey, I always knew she wore the trousers in here. Highly comical. Look, she needs these for this quartet she's in, doesn't she? <laughs> do you know, if I put these on, I'll not see all of it, too. <laughs> I think I'll come along and watch this exhibition tonight. Are you going to come and support us? You bet your life. I love a good laugh. See you. All right, ta-ra. Oh. Gonna be laughing stocks, you know that, oh, don't they? Well, come on, you two. What game on? Hey, Get the right, shop door right. shut. If they've not been now, hard luck. Anyway, we need to practice. Yeah. It's all getting far too serious for me, is this? I only joined thinking it were gonna be a bit of fun. Hey, it's not a bit of fun now, you know. We've got to win. We've got to show that flying horse lot they're not so wonderful. True, and we've got to wipe the smiles off some of the faces of the folks round here and all. Oh, come on. Come on. Get Hello, darling. Hello. Hey, we've got to get to the rovers tonight to see that. Barber shop quartet in action. There's not much chance of missing it, Flower. We've got robbers every night. Got a little present for you. Hey, what's this for? No, it's just an Easter egg. It's got a little rose on top, you see. Oh, Len. You're turning into Superman. <laughs> Thanks, love. 
I'm not just a pretty face. I bet Rena Roberts flogged you with this, didn't she? I bet she landed herself with a load of Duff Sellers. Is, is that all the thanks I get for bringing you... Give it it back. No, I love it. It's wonderful. It's the best Easter egg you've ever bought me. <laughs> now, listen. You get that butty down you to keep your strength up to finish my central eating. Don't worry. It'll be done by tonight, love. <laughs> Unless you want to go out this afternoon, do you? No, thanks. I'd rather have my central eating. It'll be there, sweetheart. It seems a bit daft, though, doesn't it, putting in central eating just when the weather's getting warmer? I don't care if we have a heat wave. All I want is my central eating. This is it, number one. Play next door to the pub, eh? I'll be handy for your dad. <laughs> it's not dad's house, actually. It's great Uncle Albert's. It's been here since 1919. Came back from fighting in the First World War and moved in here. Just think, 61 years in the same house. Good God, must be as old as Methuselah. <laughs> Almost. You'll like him, he's a real collector's piece, my great Uncle Albert. Susan, what are you doing here? Come in, love, come in here. I'm glad to see you. Oh, it's great to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty well, considering. Who's this young fella? This is a friend of mine, Duncan Craig. Duncan, this is my great Uncle Albert. Pleased to meet you. All right. Well, well come on in, love. You, your dad never told me you were coming. Well, Dad doesn't know. We thought we'd surprise you both. Where is Dad? I don't know. He just popped out somewhere. I don't think it'll be long before he comes back. Well, are you staying or what? Just passing through, really. Oh. Oh, you, you're not from around these parts, then? Me? No, no way. Duncan's from Glasgow. We travelled down together. Oh, I see. We put our bikes in the train and then got off at Manchester and rode out here to see you. Bikes? Aye, we're on a cycling holiday. What, you and our Susan? Oh, it's great to see you. Tell me all the news. What's been happening? No, 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 no. slow down a bit, slow down. I can't take all that in. And the waters as they flow seem to murmur so loud. No, 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 no. It's you again, Alf. You keep singing Whisper. Oh, look, it murmur, whisper, it's all the same, isn't it's it? It's not the same. Will you try and make an effort, Alf? He is making an effort, thank you very much. He's doing his best. Yeah, all right, let's not lose our temp. You know, it's supposed to be a bit of fun when we started. Hey, you? it's certainly fun for us lot listening to you, I'll tell you. Oh, Listen, it wasn't that bad, you. <laughs> oh, that's what you think. Listen, I think we're singing the wrong song. Do you uh, know that? Oh, I think we great. ought to sing no, something like uh, Harry Mona. Sing what? Harry Mona. Harry Mona. Well, you know it. Heard of it. You do. What? You know it. Harry Mona. It goes. Harry Mona. I hear the bells. Oh, of a ding ding ding. Harry Mona. Mona. All right, all right. Look, look <laughs> stop messing. It. Look, oh, blow it. Come on. We'll have a break for five minutes. Have a five. Yeah. Yeah. Five minute break. Oh. Granted, we're not professionals, dear, but if a thing is worth doing, it is worth doing well. Well, I said main thing is for them to enjoy themselves, Mrs Walker. I mean, that's what singing ought to be about. No, there's more to it than that. Now, I am told that this quartet from the Flying Horse are quite competent, and knowing the landlord as I do... Oh, Tony Hayes, you mean? That's the man. Between you and me, dear, he is dreadfully common. I find him quite odious. Now, if his singers wipe the floor with things, he will certainly consider that he's scored a victory over the Rovers and myself. Oh, never mind, Mrs Walker. You know what they say. It's not the winning, it's the taking part. That's what the losers say. Winners never say anything like that. Right, we'll have a proper rehearsal this afternoon. Right, yeah. Oh, no, no. You can't have a rehearsal. I, I want to have her this afternoon. Hmm? Why? Now she's got you worried, hasn't she? Listen, it is the holidays, you know. He needs his rest. You shut up, yo. Look, I want our bedroom moving a bit, look. That's what you get with having newlyweds in the house. He's giving her ideas. <laughs> I'm talking about the furniture. I want it rearranging round, look. Oh, come on, Ivy. Blimey, why today, look? Well, why not today? I want wardrobe putting on opposite wall. I want dressing table putting next to it. I need you to do shifting, love. Thought you would, look. Uh, Brian can do it. Oh, thanks, Dad. Thought right, that's that settled. Right, three yeah. o'clock, eh? Yeah. yeah. Alf, all right for you, three. Yeah, fine. Do you know, it's been an eye opener for me watching Fred in charge of something. He's a right taskmaster, isn't he? Oh, do you know, I'm fed up with the whole thing. You shouldn't have joined then, should you? All right, so don't forget, I want you in your proper clubber because it's a full dress rehearsal. All right. Hey, I 
haven't got an outfit yet. I mean, elf trousers are no use to me. You're not going to stand for that, are you, Alf? Shut it, yes. Just because you're a bachelor doesn't entitle you to goad these married men into a frenzy. That's my privilege. Hey, you can borrow a pair of my pants if you like, Rooney. Oh, thanks, love, but they'll not fit me, only little lad. <laughs> no, you can have a pair of mine, love. They've been near enough, right? Hey, and before you say anything, Yates, no, Ivy does not wear the trousers in our house. And apart from that, it's your round, isn't it? There was no call for any hostility. <laughs> Once your front line, you know, we were next to a Scottish regiment, Gordons. Ah, oh, Highlanders. Ah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he had some funny chaps in that lot. Put wind up me, never mind, Kaiser Bill. I had a mate joined the army, but I don't fancy it much myself. It's no fun getting shot at. Well, it weren't much fun in my time either, but you made some grand pals. Some of the best pals ever I had were at trenches with me. Not many of them left now, though. But at any rate, you don't want to hear me talking about First World War. No, I'm interested. If he says that, he means it. He always gets rude to people when he's bored. Really? They invented tanks in the First World, didn't they? Did you see anything of them? Tanks? Hey, Susan, is your dad now? There's two bikes outside, Derek. <coughs> Susan, what on earth are you doing here? Hi, Dad. You pleased to see me? Of course I am. It's marvellous. But what are you doing here? And who's this? Oh, yes, this is a friend of mine, Duncan Craig. Duncan, my dad. How are you? How are you? Pleased to meet you. You came down together, did you? Uh, not on those bikes, surely? No, of course not. We were on the train, though, and we to change at Manchester, so just in the spur of the moment, really, we thought we'd come and see you. Yeah, but where are you going? I mean, what's it all about? Uh, we're heading for North Wales. We're turning round in the bikes and staying in youth hostels. We're just getting away from Glasgow for a few days. Uh, you two together? Aye. On holiday? I see. <laughs> How's it going? Fine. Why have you taken that radiator off our bedroom wall? Is there something wrong with it? Oh, don't panic, no. It's just uh, teething troubles, that's all. Teething trouble? I make it sound like a baby. Well, that's what central heat is like, a baby. All your problems are wind and water. <laughs> is that so? Yeah, you've got to get rid of the wind before the water will start to flow, you see. Oh, oh. Well, I don't know about a baby. This central eating's more like an old man. How do you make that up? Well, that radiator that's lying on our bedroom floor for a start. What about it? Somebody's had a game of noughts and crosses on the back of it oh, in white paint. Yeah, it was just Eddie, that's all. That figures. You mean while he was painting the front to make it look new? Oh. I thought we were having a proper new central eating system, Len, not old stuff. Now, hang on a minute. I hope you're not palming me off with clapped out old rubbish. Now, would I do that? You might. Save a bob or two. I know you. You love a bargain. Yeah, and I know you too. I mean, I wouldn't use inferior stuff. I mean, not in a little palace. All right, then. But just remember, you're the father of this little central heating baby. Make sure it isn't a little illegitimate one. I thought you'd be pleased to see us. Oh, of course I am, lover. I'm just trying to get a clear picture of your movements, that's all. Well, the rest of the group have gone on ahead to North Wales. We'll catch up with them tomorrow. Oh, I see you with a party. It's a school thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, these school things are all wet. This is just a, a few friends. Kindred spirits, you might say. Eight of us together, Dad. We just think that cycling around Sidonia and staying in youth hostels for great fun. Oh, yes, yes, uh, I expect it will. Well, I've made a fresh brew. Oh. How many sugars does this young man of yours take? Uh, two, please. You could have asked him, Uncle Albert. I don't know why you keep calling him my young man. He's just a friend. Oh, I stand corrected. Look, uh, why don't you stay here tonight and then go on to North Wales first thing tomorrow? <laughs> Great, I was hoping we could. If you can find room for us. Oh, well, I think we could manage that. Uh, well, we've got sleeping bags so we can sleep anywhere. And who's in charge of you on this holiday? In charge of us? Nobody. Except ourselves. Oh, oh, I see. We're not idiots, you know. We can look after ourselves. Oh! <laughs> oh! Bye! <laughs> you look like little large on a bad night. <laughs> hey, Alf, who's your mate? Here's me. All these years, I've been thinking you were really a woman. <laughs> now, don't stop! I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Alf. Hey, just give us a pint, quick. <laughs> and a very large vodka. <laughs> hey, are they my trousers? I hope they look better than that of me. <laughs> you look all right, love. This, I'm telling you, you look all right. You can definitely pass for the fella, Dean. <laughs> I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or what. I definitely you know what. She looks no like a fella. And you never could, love, not in a million years. You're much too feminine. <sighs> Thank you, Ivy. I'm telling you, you're all right. You'll, you'll fit in with the rest of them. Even your own mother wouldn't know you look like this. <laughs> 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 
evening. Good Hello, evening, Al. Hardly knew you would that mustache, Mrs. Roberts. If I had any sense, I'd go home right now. If you had any sense, you wouldn't have come in here in the first place, you butt, you idiot. <laughs> oh, there they go. Oh, Mrs. Walker. Here we are, then. Oh, yeah. Me and my oh, lads. Yeah. All ready to give you a lot of singing oh, yeah. lessons. Oh, you're cheeky, Dad. <laughs> Welcome to the Rovers, Mr. Hayes. Fred, dear, will you give Mr. Hayes and his team drinks on the house, of course? Now, Mr. Hayes, I'm sure we both agree that the main thing is that people should enjoy themselves. Oh, we'll enjoy ourselves, don't you, Fred? Of course you will. An evening here instead of at the Flying Horse. Oh, what a wonderful experience for your regulars. No. Right, oh, still cold. Yeah, there's still air in it. Are you sure you've got it switched on? Well, of course I have. Get out there again, have it again. Put your hand on the pipe where it goes into the radiator. Right. No. Still cold. Hey! Hey, Len, hang on. Hey, it's getting warm. Yeah, she'll be all right now. Yeah, it doesn't take long for the pump to push the water through the pipes. Oh, Len, thank you. It's a pleasure. I'll just have a wash and brush up now and we'll get off to the Rovers, eh? Um, do you particularly want to go out tonight? I should think I flipping will do. I've been struggling with that damn thing all day. I think I deserve a pint, don't yeah, I? Yeah, I know, but uh, I wouldn't mind stopping in tonight. You know, just, just to feel the house getting warm. To feel the house getting warm? Oh, great. I suppose when I decorate, you'll want to watch the paint drying. Are you going to decorate as well? And the waters as they flow seem to murmur sweet and low. You're my heart's desire. I love you, Mary. Well, we're all right, you know, but I reckon you've got a bit too much vibrato on your desk can myself. Oh, come on. You're talking rubbish. Desk can't? We haven't got any desk can't. Well, that's what I'm saying. What you could do with it is a good desk can't. Well, come on, then. Let's hear you lot, then. All right, hold your sweat. All in good time. Got to have a drink between the songs first, haven't we? Hey, Fred, they're not bad, though, are they? Oh, give over, Bert. You'll make them look ordinary. Oh, I don't think so, Fred. No, this is only a suggestion. But have you lot ever considered mime into a record? I bet yes. you wish you had singing like that in here every night, eh? Oh, this would be fair to the flying horse now, would it? How do you mean? Well, we have the best beer, the best stuff, a superior clientele. You must have some consolation. And the best singers, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I. Well, prove it then. Come on, yeah. let's hear you. What the bloody hell's that? Hey, 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 do you mind? That that you're talking about happens to be my wife. Well, that's not my fault, mate. Look, uh, and anyway, on. I'm telling you, you can't have a woman in a barber shop quartet. Rubbish. What? Who says? You can't. It's a well-known fact. You cannot have a woman in a barber shop quartet. Hey, 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 now listen to you, Mr Big Mouth. Don't you come in here shouting about what women can do and what they can't do. It's not up to you to say what we can do. Look. Have you heard of the Sex Discrimination Act, have you? Equal opportunities, have you? Well, don't keep butting in while I'm talking to you. Look, women are entitled to have the say whether you like it or not. Mate, shut up and you stick big. You know blokes like you, you're frightened of women. That's your trouble, you're frightened of them deep down inside. Me? Frightened of women? You must be joking. Well, what are you madding for, then? Just shut up let somebody else have a say. Now, look at you. If you start any more discriminating against women, women might start discriminating against you. Like putting a boycott on your pub, mate. All right, all right, please yourselves. But it's not what I call a barber shop quartet. It's not what we call them either, mate. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, you've all heard the barber shop quartet from the Flying Horse. I now give you your own foursome from the Rover's Return. I don't know what our Ken's playing at. Oh, I'm sure he'll put his foot down. Well, he'd better. I say he'd better. <laughs> Shush! Really? I object to being shushed on my own premises. Sweet Adeline, sweet Adeline, my Adeline, at night, dear heart, at night, dear heart, for you I pine. Yes, do you do these days in trees?
Gracie. Oh, they're fine. You haven't mentioned her. Aren't you seen so much of her? Not as much, no. Well, what does your grandma think about this holiday? You know, you teenagers all off under your own steam. Well, you know, Gran, she did quite a bit clucking. She doesn't approve. Well, it's only what you can expect from her generation. They're pretty narrow-minded. Not like you, Dad. In all my dreams, in all my dreams, your fair face beams, your fair face beams, your you're the flower of my heart, sweet Adam, sweet Adam. <laughs> about that, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The Long Barber Shop Quartet from the Rovers Return. <laughs> well, about a barber shop quartet, it's more like a Betty shop quartet. Well, frankly, dear, you know, I'm quite relieved. I fully expected them to be terrible. And they were no worse than poor. Hey, I'm glad that's over. Well, yeah. I'm throwing in my moustache. Ooh! <laughs> hey, get a mini <laughs> Hey, it's not my round, it's yours. Oh, come on, it's yours. I it's got a mini four. Hang about, I'm getting a mini because I'm proud of you. Oh, well, I hope you're going to be a good loser, Fred. What are you talking about? Oh, look, we're great. Oh, give over. For a kick-off, one of them are flat. If anybody looks at me, there'll be trouble. Be a good loser, Fred. Get the ailing. Oh, give over, Tony. I'll look, we're as good as y'all at any day. Oh, no, Fred, no. I mean, they're not bad. For novices like, but my lot can knock spots off them. Come on, fair dues, Fred is right, you know. Yes, he is right. You are? What, what, what do you think, Eddie? But you want the truth, or what? Well, all right, but I'm admitting nothing. Well, we are on home ground. Bet, get around him for the flying horse, will you? I'll cough. Have you, um, all right with your home improvements, then, Eddie? Turn over nine into a show house? You'll be surprised. It's coming long, smashing. You'll be having housewarming, do then, will you? Ah, as a matter of fact, it's going on right now. Isn't that right, Rita? <laughs> it's not up to me to put my foot in it. It's up to our Kenny's the father. I'm sure he will. He won't let her go. After all, she's only 16. Oh, well, happily thinks of safety in numbers. I expect that's what the Sabine women thought. Oh, I think I'll make a cup of tea. <laughs> what did you think of the picture? Well, I wasn't over keen. No. Not me, really. There was a bit too much crudity in it for me. Do you know what I find? The sort of pictures I like best are, are all children's films. I mean, I'd love to see Bambi again if ever it came anywhere near. Oh, that was a lovely film, yeah. But you don't like going to when you know that most of the audience are going to be children. Well, not unless you've got a child you can take yourself. We could always take Tracy. Oh, that's a good idea, cos Tracy would like it too, wouldn't she? Uh, would you like a biscuit, by the way? Yes, please, Mavis. Have you made any plans for t tomorrow, for your birthday, I mean? No, it'll just be a day like any other day. Why don't you have a party? A party? You mean here? Well, why not? I mean, I know it doesn't give you much time, but I'd help with all the preparation and it would be rather nice, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it would. All right, I will have a party. I keep meaning to be more sociable. Well, a party's a good way to stop. Shall we go then, darling? Oh, flipping heck, it's like an oven in here. Oh, then it's wonderful. We're coming into a warm house. Oh, I love it. Oh. Is that the end of the strip? We're just getting interested. <laughs> You've got to pay for it, you know. Huh? Heat. You wait till the gas bills start coming in. I don't care. It's worth every penny. It's wonderful. Ah, it's too much, though. I'll turn it down. Oh, Len, only a bit, eh? I know you think I go on about central eating, and perhaps I do, but... Oh, just think. We've got a nice, warm bedroom. I'll never forget what it was like when I were a kid. Freezing cold oilcloth on floor, icicles at window, and throwing old coats on top at bedclothes. All right, you've talked me into it. What? An early night. Oh. Come on. <laughs> These sleeping bags are marvellous, you know, really warm. Just a thing for a cold youth hostel, I tent even. It's better to be miles too warm here tonight. I'll put the bikes at the back. Do you think they'll be all right there? Oh, yes, they'll be all right round here. Well, for one night, anyway. Uh, Duncan, I think you'll be more comfortable in the front room. Oh, no, I'll be all right here. No, I think you'll be better in the front room. There's more space there, and I've moved a table out of the way for you. Oh, OK, then. The night, Susie. Sleep tight. Night, Duncan. I expect this is the last good night's sleep we'll get for a while. Right, 
Right, well, I'll go and lock the front door. Good night, love. Night, Uncle Albert. You're not letting it off on our with that young man, are you? It's not as simple as you think. But you're her father. Just tell her she can't go. And then what? Eh? Look, the strong father act is gone. It doesn't work anymore. It's a different world. Good night, love. Night, Dad. Sleep well. Hey, Sleeping Beauty. Get off. I never touched you. You're going to sick on my tummy. As if I do a thing like that. Peter used to. If ever there was a bit of sun and I was lying out my bikini, plonk, a dirty great foot would land on me. Oh, what peculiar habits my children do have. He has, I haven't. I'm perfect. <laughs> I'll get dressed and then get my breakfast. And uh, what about Duncan? Oh, he'll get his own. <laughs> Real women's liver, I see. No, we've talked about it. I mean, if we're halfway up the mountain and I get tired, I won't expect him to carry me. Susan, about this holiday. I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise we'd argue all the time. That wouldn't be much fun. <sighs> Morning, Mr. Battle. I heard you talking. Sleep all right? Oh, great. My mother said I could sleep in a clothesline in a first nine gale. Oh, well. <clears throat> oh, Uncle Albert, you didn't have to get up so early. Well, who can sleep with that racket going on? Oh, that bang. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tarlock, that was me. I knocked a wee table over when I got up. Couldn't you see it in the dark? Well, I hope you haven't broken out. No, everything's fine. Because there's some very valuable antiques in that front parlour, you know. Valuable? Well, to me, they are. Yes, I know. I'll use the bathroom first. You get your shoes on, case you stand in a pin or something, do your footing. That'll set us off to a great start. Boss a wee devil, isn't she? Well, what are you going to do about it? Talk to her, when I get a chance. Talk to her? No use talking. You want to tell her she can't go. No, I don't think that's the way to go about it. Laying down the law. Oh, well, look here. It's no good you thinking you can sidestep the affair with them fancy words of yours. And just think on. If they're going off this morning, you've got no time to waste dodging the issue. You mind not singing, love? Why not? I don't think I can afford you. Ah, well, for you, you get the entire act and an encore for free. I'll remind you about that tonight. Hey, shall I make us something special tonight? Now, what would you like? What have I done to deserve this? You have made me warm. For the first time in my life, I woke up, got out of bed, and I was warm. You were even colder than our flipping honeymoon, you know. Mm. And that was in Tenerife. But I've always been a cold person. It comes with having uh, delicate, fragile bones. Well, yeah, you want to get some meat on it, then? If you'd have wanted quantity, you should have married a cart horse, not a race horse. Yeah, that looks good. Mm. I take it you're uh, happy now, then, are you? Well, for the time being. Hey. Oh, my God, I knew it wouldn't last long. Oh, oh I'll Hello. not stop. I don't want to interrupt your breakfast. And anyway, I've left Louise oh, on sure. her up. Sit down, have a cup of tea. Oh, no, I, I won't. No, thank you all the same. I just came in to say thank you for your card and especially the lovely words. Mavis, it's your birthday. <laughs> oh. Happy birthday, love. <laughs> Thank you. Then it's Mavis's birthday. The happy birthday, Mavis. <laughs> oh, no, the words were lovely. Oh. It was all about the value of true and lasting friendship. Oh, when I opened it this morning, it made me want to cry. <laughs> Should have got you a rude one. <laughs> no, I mean, cry in a nice way, you know. <laughs> anyway, I, it's not the only reason I came round this morning. I, I, I wondered if... Uh, well, if you'd like to come round tonight. I'm oh, sorry, love, we're having a quiet lovely. little we'd love to. Is it a party? Oh, well, not a party, exactly. You know, just a few friends oh. in impromptu. Well, okay. I, I think they're more fun that way, you know. I mean, mm. I think the best parties are sort of spur at the moment. Mm. Not that I know much about it, really. The best parties are the ones with the best people. And if you're there and we're there, cracked it. Oh. Isn't she, Len? <laughs> lovely. Bye, then. Tarallo. Tarallo. Oh, all right, I'll go. Hey, what was on that card, anyway? I don't know. I only picked it because I thought she'd like that silly kitten on front. Well, I'll just pop down to my allotment. I've got one or two little jobs to do. Uh, take it you'll be here when I get back. Yeah, we're not leaving till half past twelve. There's a train about one, so we'll catch that one. Oh, that's good. I've got plenty of time, then. I, uh, 
Happen you'd like to come down with me? I, I can use a strong pair of arms. Ah, uh, well, I've got the bikes to oil. Well, I'd be glad if you would give Uncle Albert a hand for half an hour or so, Duncan. He's OK with the rest, but he's not so hot on the digging. Aye, OK. I'll do the bikes when I get back. One of the brake blocks is a wee bit loose. Right, well, come on, then. Won't be long. He seems willing. Oh, he's nice. I wish you'd give him a chance. Oh, I've got nothing against him. It's just the principle of the thing. Dad, I don't want to talk about Duncan. I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, we've not really been on our own since I got here. Is it all off with you and Deirdre? Well, yes, yes, I suppose it is. What happened? Look, love, I, uh, I really don't want to talk about it. I mean, it's over and that's all there is to it. I'm sorry, I like Deirdre. She'd have been good for you. Well, maybe I wouldn't have been good for her. I wish you'd get married again. So does Peter. You talk about it. Sometimes, when he's home. He thinks it'd be great. Well, we both do. Nice to know that you worry about your poor old dad. Of course we worry about you. And I worry about you, love. Heaven knows I do. Thanks, Mrs. Hooper. I'll not forget the fancies on Friday. Bye bye, love. Bye bye. Do you know she's that excited? Her son's coming home from Hong Kong. He's in the army there. She hasn't seen him for two years. Mm. I might go far east. Oh, yeah. When? Be a geisha girl. Working behind Rover's return bars. Best training in the world for that. Being meek and subservient. Jumping to attend to man's every whim. Chuck us a packet of fags, Scott. When will you ever meek and subservient? Anyway, geisha girls don't smoke. This one will. This one will be the latest model in liberated geishas. All the best of the East and the West. How about that for a slogan? How about paying for them fags? Oh, chuck them on slate. Chuck oh. chop. Oh, come on, Bet. There's over 20 quid on slate as it is. What about settling up? I'll tell you what I'll do with you. Let it get up to 25 first. I always was best with nice round figures. Hello. Are you busy? No, we're just discussing the balance of payments. What can I get you? <laughs> oh, I don't want to serve in the, It's social. Oh. Yes, I, I've wanted a few and, and I've... And better, of course. Naturally. <laughs> We'd like to come tonight. Now, I know it's short notice, but I would be delighted if you could. Come where, love? Oh, isn't <laughs> that typical of me? <laughs> No, come in. Oh, I ran to the flat. Now, it's nothing formal. I mean, it's just very casual. You don't have to dress up or anything. Just a few drinks and snacks and that. Well, I just, I just thought it would be nice. Yes. <laughs> yes, we could come, couldn't we, love? <laughs> You'd be very welcome. <laughs> there you are, Al. The rave-up of the year. Now you've got so much to look forward to, haven't you? And aren't I the lucky little girl as well? Why? Because, unfortunately, regrettably and sadly, I'm working. I shan't be able to go. Dad, what's this all about? You frightened to sleep with Duncan, is that it? You do come straight out with things, you lot, don't you? I don't see the sense in anything else. Well, I must say, I wish everyone was as straightforward as you. There'd be a lot less misunderstanding. That's what I'm trying to do. You both got it dead wrong about me and him. Both? Don't tell me Uncle Albert hasn't been having a go at you about it. Well, he's worried about you, like I am. Well, you needn't be. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look, Susan, I accept that right now you think you know what you're doing and you've got everything under control. But what about when you're there? Away from your gran and me in a completely different environment? Well, I won't suddenly change, become a mad woman of the mountains or anything. No, I don't mean that, love, but... Well, everybody's different on holiday, away from the normal restrictions. Everything's much more relaxed and free and easy. But we're staying in hostels and there won't just be two of us. I told you, we're meeting the gang down there. Yeah, well, that doesn't guarantee anything. Look, if I wanted to sleep around, I could do it in Glasgow. If you want to do that sort of thing, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, I know. That's a standard argument. But it's also valid to say that away from home, the temptations are greater. And, of course, the opportunities. What it all boils down to is you just don't trust me. Well, I think you might be putting yourself into a situation that you might find you've got no control over. But lots of kids go on holiday together. Yeah, I know. I'm aware of that. But you're only 16, love. I mean, couldn't you wait another couple of years? I'd still be the same person. Oh, a little older, a little more experienced, better able to make adult decisions. And how am I supposed to get experience and make adult decisions if you keep treating me like a child? How's it all supposed to happen by magic? Just promise me you'll be sensible. The trouble with your generation is you're all hung up in sex. What? No, I mean it. You grew up with all the kinds of things you didn't talk about. Well, we certainly don't come out with things as frankly as your lot do. Yes, well, we can talk about it, so we don't spend all our time thinking about it. There's more important things. Honestly, it's not such a big deal. 
If you want to worry about me, why don't you worry about me falling to a river or being chased by a bull or something? That's just as likely to happen. <laughs> you try to make me old before my time, young lady. Look, I'll send your postcard every day just to let you know I'm all right. No. No, you don't need to do that. Just the old one of a waterfall to let me know what I'm missing. I'll bring your Welsh hat back. Just bring yourself back, love. Hey, it was a good night last night, eh, Fred? Oh, we didn't do so bad. <laughs> Not bad. We were fantastic. We should be on one of them television talent programmes. True, yeah. Catch a falling star. Hey, <laughs> don't <laughs> knock yourself. I'm not. I was brilliant. It was these three dead who... Oh. Hey, get off. Look, if it hadn't been for the Welsh Robertses, with the, the corner shop by Steadford winners three times running, you'd have been nowhere. Am I right, Annie? Well, Reedley's voice did add a certain piquancy to an otherwise all-male group. As a barbershop quartet, it was certainly different. Oh, I don't know. I prefer <laughs> sex pistols myself. You prefer sex anything, Lynch. True. And he's about as Welsh as a black pudding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll have a quick one with you in here. And then I'll go into town and get something for me. I thought you already had something for her. Oh, only some cologne and towels. Well, when she came in this morning, I was all thrilled with her little self and grateful for a card. I felt rotten. I mean, she doesn't expect much, does she? So I'd like to get her something more. Yeah. You understand, don't you? You are a good one, you know, Rita. I mean, I'm soft. Well, don't worry, I won't spend a fortune. We haven't got a fortune now that I've got a wife and central leading to support. You notice the way to put the price of gas up after I'd installed my banking installation. It's my central leading, isn't it? <laughs> You're happy with the improvements, then? <laughs> oh, transformation. Well, I suppose after what you've had to put up with all these years, I suppose the odd radiator would seem like seventh heaven. It's a little more than that, actually. Don't tell me you've managed to get him to give it a lick of paint and all. Ivy, it's sweet of you to be so interested. You ought to pop in sometime and have a look. I'd like to. We'll come round after tea, won't we, Bert? Well. See if uh, we can pick up a few tips on modernisation. Not tonight. We're going to Mavis's. Oh, we we'll won't stop. I mean, after all, it's not as if it'll take us all that long, will it? Oh, Fred. Just about. Well, it shouldn't take you more than about ten minutes to the station. Yes, I know. We came from there last night. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, Duncan, um, look after her, eh? Sure. She'll be fine. Bye, Uncle Albert. All right, and look after yourself, promise? You look after yourself, more likely. Be careful how you ride them bikes, and don't go and get lost on the mountain. All right, Uncle Albert, she knows about all that. Oh. Bye, love. And Bye. thanks for having us. Aye, thanks. It was great. And stop worrying about me and start worrying about yourself for a change. I'm OK. We're going to miss that train. Well, they've gone. Yes. And I hope you're satisfied. Well, yes. I think I am. Bye. <laughs> Oh, it's only quiet, and now the kids have gone, isn't it? Aye. She is my daughter, you know. I'm aware of that. I wondered if you were. Now, look, Uncle Albert, I'm going to say this once, and then I never want to have this conversation again about either Susan or Peter. I know what you think, but I didn't let her go because I was too weak to stop her. I could have told her not to go, and she would have listened. Why didn't you? Because I've been talking to her. I'm getting to know her all over again, not as a child, my little girl Susan, but as a woman. She's sensible, and she's got her priorities right. She's 16. Being young doesn't make her stupid any more than being older makes you wise. Look, all I know is she's growing up right, and I'm just heartsick that I can't take any of the credit for that. Maybe it's a grand, but more likely it's a streak of instinctive common sense she's inherited from her mother. You trusted Val, didn't you, Uncle Albert? You loved her, and you knew she wouldn't go off the rails just because she was young. Well, Val were different. In fact, everything was different. You trusted her because you knew her. Because she was Val. Well, it's exactly the same with me and Susan. All right, I mean, of course I'm worried about the million and one things that could happen to her. It could happen to any girl, but she said it herself. She's got to be allowed to grow up 
and in her own way. Now, it might sound corny, but if I've lost a child, I've gained a friend. OK, I'll get the tea ready. Uh, it must be grand to know you're right. No, Uncle Albert. And that's the difference between us. I don't know I'm right. Oh, I do hope there'll be enough. Oh, there'll be plenty. Now relax. Start enjoying yourself. Yes, well, I will once they start to arrive. What time did you tell them to come? Oh, I, I didn't. I, I just said to come around. Do you think I should have stayed at a time? No, it doesn't matter. They'll come when they're ready. <sighs> Who did you actually ask in the end? Oh, well, you know, all my friends, the usual crowd. See, you, you don't suppose they've forgotten? Well, hardly, seeing as you only asked them this morning. Oh, Mavis, calm down. You'll be a nervous wreck at this rate. Have a drink. Oh, no, I couldn't, not yet. You'll be all right once it gets going. I think the trouble with me is that I worry about things like this because there isn't a man. How do you mean? Well, a woman giving a party on her own, it's sort of lopsided somehow, isn't it? You see, I like everything to be just right. Well... I can't be seeing to the food and making sure everybody's got a drink that nobody's sitting on their own. Well, it's just much harder on your own. I do know. Oh, yes, I know you do. And you're here, and that's a big help. But uh, why didn't you invite Derek? Why? Because he sent me a card. I haven't seen him for months. Well, this would have been an opportunity then. Uh, no. No, there's nothing between me and Derek now. And, well, I wouldn't ask somebody just for the sake of it. I mean, well, I can't pretend that I'm all that happy with my life as it is. I mean, no husband, no children, and no proper home of my own. But, well, if that's all I'd ever wanted out of life, well, it's not true, but... Well, I'd rather be like the way I am than, than be with somebody just for the sake of it. I mean, well, from what I've seen, you can be much more unhappy that way. Right, you can start the celebration of the guest of honours here. You see, they are coming. Oh, it's only Eddie. Hey, I heard that, Mavis. I may not be quality, but I'm quantity. <laughs> Happy birthday, love. Oh. So what did you buy in the end? A mink trim negligee? Don't be silly. Got that for me. Well, you get that, love. No, I got her a nice little blouse. We'll go with a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Hello, come in. Oh. Who you want? Hello, Ivy. Oh, I see. Bert? Well, how nice. Come on in. Well, we said we would. Of course, and you're very welcome. Well, have a look round. This is my new fully automatic cooker with the... Uh, Brown glass door, push button ignition, fitted cupboards. Well, feel free to have a good poke round. It's very nice, isn't it, Bert? Uh, smashing, yeah. Mind you, I'm surprised you didn't knock that wall down while you were at it, because we found out that open plan gives you so much more space, doesn't it, Bert? Oh, no. Well, that's very old fashioned now, love. You see, with the price of central heating going up, the trend is definitely back to separate rooms. It's in all the magazines. Isn't it, Len? Oh, yes. I, are we right, then? Yes. Certainly. If Ivy feels she's seen enough. Oh, they're not coming. Nobody's coming. I knew they wouldn't. Look, you've got to have a drink, whether you like it or not, maybe. It's supposed to be a party. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself here. Yes, that is quite right, Mavis. Look, and if nobody's here, when I've finished my drink, I'll go and fetch him. Oh, no. I mean, they've all been invited. If they don't want to come, they needn't bother, but I'm not... Hey, uh... Mavis, happy birthday, love. <laughs> Oh, well, I see we're not the last to arrive, then. Well, people do tend to be lax these days. I mean, by the time they've had the tea and washed up and got changed, I've, I've been telling Mavis... I said I'd go and fetch him, only she doesn't want nobody pressed down, oh, you know. Of course she does. No, anyway, you're both here, and thank you ever so much for your presence. <coughs> Welcome. I know it'll be lovely knowing your taste. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Rita, what can I get you to drink? It's a vodka, vodka for you. Vodka? And a uh, scotch for oh. me, please. Hey, just a little one, because I forgot something. I want Len to nip home. Oh. Won't be long. Come here, love. Oh, I'll have a 
What have you left at home? It's uh, personal. Uh, just um, get down to the Rovers and get them all up here if you have to drag them by the hair of the head. And she said you didn't I don't care what she says. She won't know, will she? This is one birthday party she'll remember. All right, love? Yes, Sarah. Now, that's the scotch. Thank that's you, very And uh, that's a vodka. Thank you, and tonic you love. For you and mine. <laughs> and there's little fiddly bits and pieces there on oh. the table. There's plenty of food for later. Special. So I hope you haven't had a big tea. Oh, <laughs> oh isn't this nice? Oh, my best friend. Oh, we're going to have a lovely evening. We are, love, because your Auntie Rita said so. Happy birthday, kid. Thank Happy you. birthday, Mabel. Thanks so much. Susan got off all right, did she, Kenneth? Yes, yes, they went on the lunchtime train. Oh, joining up with the glide players, I suppose. Uh, no. Oh, I presume that she was going on holiday. Youth hostelling, hardly the grandparents seen. On their own? With friends. Really? Really? You know, I wouldn't mind a free and easy holiday like that. There's only one thing that would worry me. Yeah, what's that? Youth hostelling. I mean, would I be old enough? <laughs> they look very flash, them cupboards, you know, but they're not all that well finished inside. They're not the best. Yeah, I know. Ours are not the best, are they? Yeah, but you're not in business, are you? I mean, he is. You'd think that Len Fairclough could have some better. All right, get fell in. Huh? Me is his party. You're all coming. Come on, we want your bodies. Well, we don't have to go, do we? I thought you were only a bit of a drink, any row. No. Well, I can't go. I've got Cale in bed with a cold. All right, you're excused, but I want to see all the rest of you there. Sorry, Pat. I'm working. Me too, then. <laughs> and where do you think you're going? <laughs> do you know, we were under the impression that this was a pub and we've come in for a drink. We're funny like that, aren't we, love? About turn and get out again. There's plenty of booze at Mavis's and plenty of food and all. She's done enough to feed an army. Oh, she hasn't, has she? Yeah. Do you know, she made out it was something and nothing this morning. Pop in if you've no better to do, that's what she said to me. Well, you know, maybe she isn't the pushiest of people. Yeah, but I am, so come on, let's be having you. Well, has she gone to a lot of trouble, made a proper do? She's been at it all day, from what I can gather. Oh, yeah. we'd better go Hey, then. Kenny, you going? Yeah, well, I'll come for a while. Excuse me. You know, Len, anyone else, and for any other reason, I should be quite annoyed. Why? Well, emptying my pub of one fell swoop. <coughs> Anyhow. Take this to Mavis, will you? With my best wishes. Bless you, love. So. Hello, Rovers. Yeah? Oh, yeah, just a minute. But. Oh. Who is it? That's here. Dan Chuck. How are you? Are you okay? Oh, me too. Monday. For you, I can be free any time. Anybody else would have to apply in triplicate three months in advance. Cheeky. See you Monday, then. Happy wonder to return, does he? That's right. Know his motto, do you? That bag will travel. Fred Chuck, as long as he keeps travelling in this direction, I really don't give a damn. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't, did you? I can't do this kind oh, of you job. You're doing it, mate. Just let it all hang out, girl. Come on. <laughs> You wouldn't what, Emma, then? Worry about that daughter of yours. I mean, the last time I met her, she struck me as having a very good head on her shoulders. But when do you start worrying? Well, I'm not really the person to ask. I don't suppose you ever do. Now, love. <laughs> All right. Uh, excuse me a minute. What? Hey, excuse me. Hey, Just you stay where you are, darling. Better of us, please. Oh. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mavis. Happy birthday to you. By the way, you're spending some time in here, aren't you, this morning? And well worthwhile, wouldn't you say? Well worthwhile. Something special I know not about. Could be something special I know not about. Who knows what the future may hold? And the stars, is it? Good, are they? Well, let's just say they look promising. There's talk of dark, handsome fellas. And it's spring, and it's leap year. Even if I am a bit pushed. Add yours truly to that little lot, and you've got a dish well worth remembering. Well, nobody can say you won't be ready. <laughs> no, not even my worst enemy. Shall I tell you how it is with us unmarried ladies? Shall I? Shall I tell you what frightens us to death? What wakes us up screaming in the middle of the night, covered with delicate perspiration? Shall I? Shall I tell you? I can't wait. 
After all these years of putting the boot in, lying, even doing the dirty on your best mates, suddenly all your hard work pays off. Sir Lancelot rides up on his dashing white charger and you've still got your flaming curlers in. So stand well back, kid. I've not done yet. Hey, I hope you two watch my time. Why? Well, the hangmaid will be waiting for you, won't she? How do you know? It means Pauline Stringer. Oh, blow her. We're not bothered about her. Hey, what time is it, Brown? Uh, 25 past. Hey, just think we have better get going. Hey, love, are you having anything? Yes, stop worrying, will you? Gail's bringing me something. Hey, well, what about washing up? Oh, I'm basically just washing up, love. I'll pay up to the washing up, love. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hey, I've just seen a beautiful picture in that decorator shop in the precinct. Oh, I like pictures, Kate. Them big ones with gold frames. Yeah, this is a big one with a sea and the cliffs. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh. Still, it'll be gone by the time we get our house. Well, you can hang up in here in the meantime. Nah, I can't. It's too big for the bedroom. No, I meant in here. Then perhaps we can get a pleasure out of it for a month or two. Yeah, I like a nice sea picture and all. Hey, I thought we were saving up. No, this is different. It's for the house. Anyway, I haven't made up my mind yet. Thanks for the offer. I've told you, love. This is your house. Are you coming or aren't you? Awake. <laughs> Be off, love. ta -ra. see ya. ta Chuck. See if you're all right. What's all the rush? That new bus have got over the road. What? They're not frightened of her, are they? Heavens no, love. Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> No, she's edgy, you know. Says life's passing her by. Well, of course life's passing her by. Life's passing us all by. There's only one class of people that live life to the full stamp, and that's your beautiful people. We're not one of them. Excuse me. We weren't by any chance waiting for an answer to that question. No, that was me wondering if we could have our pints today. Well, don't take long to answer, does it, mate? Two and three, it doesn't. We know our places. Yeah, bowed under the weight of parasitical big business. I mean, take them two, for instance. If they get into trouble, what do they do? Cry out to the government. And what do the government say? I'll tell you. They say give them a handout. That's what they say. Give them Stan and Eddie's tax. Two and a half billion pounds the government gave to small shopkeepers last year. They gave us plumbers twice that. Oh. And there you are. And you've got your preferential taxes and all. What happens if we go to the government for a handout? I'll tell you, we just get labelled as scroungers. How do you find him? What do you mean, as a working man or someone to laugh at? Same thing, I should think. No, go on, as a working man. He's here and there, comes and goes, depends on the weather. Oh, do you mind? I'm here, you know. What do we talk behind yes. your back? Look, if you hey, want listen, to... what are you having to drink? Oh. Oh, I'll have a pint of bitter, thanks very much. And your gentleman friend. Oh, thank you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Give him a pint each, will you, bet? I must be balmy. Make them halves, they're in hurry. Uh, could I use your phone, Mrs. Walker? Please. I don't belong, Mrs. Walker. Oh, no, I won't. Uh, do you happen to have your little book handy? Only I can never remember the code for Chesterfield. What are you ringing Chesterfield for? Oh. Because my son lives there, and my daughter in law, and my grandchildren. And Betty Mossop's husband's driving her down there this afternoon to see her sister, and they've offered me a lift. Any more questions? Really? Yeah. Oh, while you're here, Mrs. Walker, uh, would you mind if I finished a bit early tonight? I've got a few hours owing. Well, I think we're in cold, can't we, Elizabeth? Yes, I think so, yeah. Mm. Right, then, well, open up and then you can go as soon as you like. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Hello? Polly? It's your mother-in-law. <laughs> Listen, I've got a chance of a lift down there this afternoon. Will it be all right? Oh, yes. Right, then. Expect me about five, Chuck, eh? Ah. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, give them a big kiss from me and tell them their nana's coming. <laughs> right. Bye-bye, love. Bye. <laughs> right. <coughs> Drink up and get yourself home. I'll give you your instructions. You and all, if you're going to keep him company. Certain decision, Mrs Ogden. Yeah, well, it's the only holiday I'll get. Mind you, I prefer it that way. I mean, I'd sooner have a day or two with my family now and again than all your weeks on the Costa What's It. Quite right, too. You know, personally, and a lot of thinking people are holding the same view, I have forsworn foreign holidays for the rest of my life. I ask you, what happens? You give up all the many comforts of your own home, and for what? Bad hygiene, poor service, endless hours in airports, 101 ailments which you would never catch in Weatherfield. I am amazed at the price we pay for a lower standard of living. 
You're absolutely right, Mrs. Walker. I know, Mrs. Ogden. No, but yeah. I mean, that's all we are doing, lowering us standards. Well, take me when I went to France, for instance. Now, it were all right. I'm not saying out against it, but, well, it went out like home. Do you know I'm prepared to believe that, Hilda? I don't care whether you're prepared to believe it or not. I'm only telling the truth. I mean, when you're at home, you're, well, at home, aren't you? You know what everything is for a start. Like your stamp. Yeah, well, there is that. At least I know what he's up to while I'm here. Where were you when I were in France, then? Hey. I say, where were you when I were in France, lowering my standards? Oh, come on, drink your beer and get off home. You're a flipping marvel. You are on me, Stilda. Am I right in thinking that today is the day a certain lorry driver gentleman returns to this area? Yes, you are right, Mrs. Walker. I didn't like saying. But we can't exactly lock her up like a princess in the tower, can we? Hardly. Mm. We can only hope that Mrs. Tanner stays in for the evening. Yeah. Right. Now, there's a tin of Spam and uh, half a dozen eggs and some bacon, so you won't starve, all right? Now, any more questions? Oh, here. When the clothing teller comes, give him this. You needn't bother opening it. There's no money inside. Yeah. Now, then, what else is there? Um... Oh, yeah. Nip across the road and tell Mike Baldwin I won't be in tonight. Gertie Fleming will stand in for me if he sends their cattle round. Why can't you tell him yourself? Because I don't want to get involved, do I? I'm in a rush. Heck of a rush, you ask me. Oh, look, Stanley. Damien and Jane are my only grandchildren. Now, I get to see them once every Preston Guild. I'm not passing up a chance like this. Why can't they come over here? They've got a car, haven't they? Perhaps it's like Hilda was saying, Stan, about lowering your standards, you know. Well, uh, I just uh, heard they were a little bit on the posh side, you know. Yeah, still, I suppose they are family. When will you be back? Well, I don't know. Well, sometime tomorrow morning, I expect. I mean, I'm dependent on the moss-ups, aren't I? But he has got a fish shop to open. Right, well, if you finish your mithering, I'll go and get myself ready. Oh, Hilda! I meant to ask you, is it all right if I have a girlfriend back tonight? Oh, yeah! Yeah, she's a very nice girl. And mind, you'll behave yourself. I thought we were going wrestling tonight. Well, we will be, won't we? Both in our own different ways. Do you like it? It's OK. Oh, it's great. It's just the sort I like. I knew you'd like it. It's for our house. Do you know how much I want me own home? Yes, I do. Just somewhere for us? I know. Do you know what I'm looking forward to more than anything? Having our friends around for a meal, one I've cooked myself. Well, we could do that now. Not with your mum and dad. Well, they'd go off for a night, you know, if we asked them. Of course they would. Next Friday night, right? I'll give Rod a ring. He's got a new bird. He'll be over like a shot. You know I only took you on approval, don't you? So you said. I've decided to keep you. Mm. There you are, Doc. straight now, aren't we? You'll be yes, back. yes. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right, Archie, after you know. I mean, it's no Charles. trouble. I mean, it comes home from work and it goes upstairs and gets washed. Then it comes down, gets night paper and sits at dinner table. Queen Elizabeth II could give him his dinner and he won't even notice me. <laughs> well, eat the same. They take you for granted. Mm. Well, that's one way of looking at it. But, I mean, on the other hand, they don't pester his other. I couldn't do with a fellow that pestered me, kid. I'd clobber him, one honest. Oh, well, it's too late to change us now, any road up, innit? Yeah. Mind you, nobody's take you off us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vera, how long is it for you now? Is it uh, 23, 24? Er, uh, 23, coming up. She's coming up and all. It's this Friday. It's never. <laughs> hey, she's right, you know, it's this Friday. Well, that's it, then. Why don't we all get together on Friday night? Oh, I have with her. I'll tell you what, you come round to us and I'll cook us a dinner. Oh, you little love, kid. She knows I hate cooking. Well, never mind, kid. You can't be good at everything. <laughs> hey, now, hold on. It's there with a bad cook. <laughs> now, Jack eats everything I put in front of him. Well, he has to do, cos I throw it at him. Oh. <laughs> hey, mind you, I'd cook for him. I like it. Good evening, sir. Don't say anything. Let me just say for the moment, 180 miles up the motorway, every inch, all I could think of was what was waiting for me at the other end. Like a pint, for instance. Like you, for instance. But I'll take the pint to be going on with. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. 
He seems quite a nice chap. I never see so little of him. Yeah. Well, he's a lorry driver. Precisely. I've got the rest of the night off. Great. We'll go for a meal. Lovely. I've got my gear in the cab. That's all you're after, is it? Uh, free lodgings? I remind you, you said that. Tomorrow morning. I'll get my coat. Stanley, you know you've missed that bus, don't you? I'm not going to rest, Finn. There's no fun on you, Todd. Stanley! Don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to the pub. It'll be all right. Well, go on, then. Give me a chance. Do you want me to go? Whoa. Who's a clever girl, then? Found your first girl. Oh, very good, yeah. Come in. Stanley. This is Pat. Pat, this is Stanley. Oh, isn't he chubby? Isn't he chubby? Oh, I love chubby men. Lovely to meet you, Stanley. Mm. Now, have you got a mirror that wins played have it with my coiffure? Yes, one throw in the kitchen there. Come on. Keep a seat warm for me. <laughs> I thought your girlfriend was coming. Well, that is my girlfriend. Hey, not long as your girlfriend. You wouldn't say that if I was Richard Burton, would you? If I was Richard Burton, you wouldn't say, that's not your wife, I know your wife. Yeah, but we swap them about, don't we? I mean, some birds you keep, some birds you kick into touch. What do you want to kick Lorna in touch for? Nice girl. I didn't kick her into touch, Stan. Her dad moved, didn't he? He could do worse, you know. I think I have. Don't get up, you'll tie yourselves out. Now, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. <laughs> right, Eddie Lum, drink his. Ooh, I love chewy men. <laughs> <laughs> You're not always open this late, are you? You don't always work as late as this, do you? What's that got to do with it? Well, we're the same as you. We can stay open as long as we like. Aye, the great advantage of our being self-employed, you can work 26 hours a day and to hell with the unions. It's a bit like banging your head against the wall, isn't it? It's nice when you stop. Ah, yeah, give over. You know you won't change it. You what? I'd give anything to be back at Roscoe and Pitts. Being told what to do, a few quid in your hand every Friday. Well, I won't go back to the post office now, anyway. No. Are you still on? Mm -hmm. Ah, don't you start. He can stay open as long as he likes, and we don't want you sticking your oar in. Oh, that's very nice. Do you know Dan? Dan Johnson, Len Fairclough? Uh, yeah, I've seen you around. Uh... Yeah, me too. Friend of Elsie's, are you? Who isn't? <clears throat> well, here they are, my mum and dad. I'm only kidding. I should hope you are. This is Alf and Reedy, my very good friends and landlords. Dan Johnson. He's just driven up from London, so uh, we thought we'd have a quiet drink. Is it all right if... Oh, uh... uh, well, uh... Oh, bless you. Come on, show, round the back. Up the apples and pears. See you, darlings. He has a bag with him. Well, I've got eyes in my head, haven't I? What do you reckon's going on? Oh, I don't know. I know who he is, though. I know who he is. He used to lodge with Elsie Tanner. He did more than lodge. Hey, hang on. Now, we're not getting involved. No, it's her life. Let her lead it. I've not had a chance to stop her yet, have I? Cosy. Very cosy. Glad you like it. I don't know all the other fellas. Oh, God. Don't tell me I'm the only man. Look, I'll tell you this just once. I've had other fellas, just like you've had other women. But they don't all get to finish up here. Not by a long chalk. To get up here, you've got to be... Go on. Special. That's what I wanted to hear. Do you want water in your whiskey? Just a little. That's my son, is nine. I was a child bride. He's a bloody lad, isn't he? Where's his dad? Have a guess. Hey? Well, say somewhere. Anywhere. 
Newcastle on time? Yeah, it could be. He could be there. I've no idea. Love not the foggiest. And that's me dad and me brother George, who I live with. Now then, they're a bit chubby. No, they're not, are they? Stan, isn't it about time you got your coat on? You said you'd see the lads down at the pub, you know. Oh, I did, yeah, I did say that. Oh, great! I love meeting people. Oh, not us. I thought we'd uh, stay here quiet, like, you know. Oh, isn't he nice? All right. I'll see you later. You certainly will, love. Make sure you make a noise. I will. Why don't you come over here? moving about. They're entitled to. It's their house. Yeah, I know, but... Uh... Well, they know the score, don't they? With you and me. Oh, yeah. Just don't want to make it too obvious. Not everybody's like you, you know. Who's as lucky? No, I mean, if you want to go to the bathroom, make sure they're not in it. Who would do anyway? You know what I mean. You weren't kidding, were you? You haven't had many fellas up here. One or two. They never amounted to much. That's the way it's been with me. Up to now. There wasn't anything between you and Elsie, was there? Elsie? No, love. Well, I think she just enjoyed having me around. Well, we had a laugh. I'm saying nothing against Elsie. You're not having me on, are you? I'm not what? You're not having me on. When did I meet you tonight? About six. And what time is it now? Just gone ten. Have I as much as laid a finger on you? No. No. Which says something. But doesn't mean I'm going to spend all night sitting in this chair. Am I allowed over there? Huh? Oh, oh, do you know, I can really relax with you. Yes, love, I noticed. Mm. You're all right, stay where you are. <laughs> Don't move. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Stanley, you're a white man. Night, yeah, night, Stanley, love. God bless. I'll see you again, love. And next time, remember, a nice little mate. You're off to bed. You're a married man. <laughs> da. Hey. Hmm? Do you think you could just put your mind to the business in hand just for five minutes? Oh, yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? And there was a recipe for a sort of apricot crumble in my magazine this week. I think I'll do that for sweet. Great. They do like apricots, don't they? Because some people don't. How do I know? It's not the sort of thing you ask, is it? You did ask them to come. You were here on a phone, clever, and they were dead chuffed. Mm. Well, make sure you ask them about apricots and before Friday. Do you think they like steak and kidney pie? Well, everybody likes steak and kidney pie. Yeah, it's pretty safe. And I'm good at pastry. Whoops, the daisy. Hey, you dirty stop -outs. Don't look at me. It's your dad. You've had one too many, you have. Ah, fire, cos like. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to that electric blanket. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Good night. Good night, Oh, before I forget, love, uh, you can come if you want to, or if you don't, it's all right. We're having Vera and Jack round uh, for a meal on, on Friday, cos it's the wedding anniversary. Hey, what night did you say? Friday! Radio's off. There's no light under the door. It's one o'clock in the morning and he's still in there. Well, unless he's jumped out at bedroom window, love, he will be. Who does so much? Well, nay, it's you that said it's not to do with us. It's her life, you said. Let her lead it. Yes, I know, but not in this house like that. I mean, we should have got rid of her last time, you know, when we had chance. Look, say no about it. Nobody will know. <laughs> with our neighbours.
Oh, well. Uh, Hilda, uh, uh, this is Pat, the girlfriend. Uh, like I said, you know. Like you said nothing. You lied to me, Eddie Yates. You, out. What did she say? I said, oh, you T, out. I don't want the likes of you in my house. Look. What's her name? Uh, Hilda. Look, Hilda. You can have your house back untouched. And you can have your husband back untouched. And you can have him back. Just do me a favour. Be careful with him. He's in a weakened condition. Pleasant dreams. By the heck. You no sooner get home. Billy must have had to get to the market to catch the early fish, but I didn't know I was going to catch him at all. Now you, sit down there. I'm having a pot of tea and something to say to you. What's all the noise about? A door's banging all over the... Hey, she's gone home to fetch her mate. She's gone to fetch her mate, hasn't she? Hey, so put some clothes on. No, no, no. I can just do with a bit of... Stanley! Oh, Chuck. Will I do, Stanley? Up out of that bed. Mm. Oh. Whatever happened to Paul Newman? What time is it? It's nearly half eight. I thought you said you were going to give me an early shot. I did. I wanted you long gone by this time. I overslept, didn't I? Oh, so long as I'm in Bootle by about twelve. It's not you getting to Bootle what's bothering me, sunshine. Shall I order some malt loaf, see how they go? Shh! Well, what do you think you've heard now? Either somebody's just been in the bathroom or they're just going in. Well, bet you as a bathroom, you know. I mean, being a normal person with normal needs and habits. There's no need for sarcasm, Alf. I'm sorry, love, but look, what if he has stopped? Though I think he left in the early hours of the morning. His sort don't stay in the same bed long. Oh, and don't be vulgar, either. Well, I'm sorry, love, but if he has stayed, what business is it of yours? I'll tell you, shall I? It is none. None of your business. It is my house. Yeah, but... She pays rent for that flat, you know. She's not a squatter. And as long as she don't turn it into a pigsty or a... Or a what? Well, you know, as long as she behaves reasonably, you don't have any cause to complain. Now, be honest, do you? No, I don't suppose so. But it doesn't mean to say I have to like it. Yeah, well, I don't like it either. I don't like the thought of some big airy fellow upstairs. But she is our tenant. He's her friend. We must respect her right to have him here. And she's a grown woman. Who should know better? Well, I don't think he's stayed anyway. He'll be halfway down the M6 by now. I mean, he's, he'll probably never show his face up here again. Oh, well, let's hope so. What is it you're asking me? Eh? Oh, uh, malt loaves. Did you want to order some more? Oh, I'll try half a dozen. Right. Did you hear voices then? No, I didn't. Do you know, I'm sure I did. Same old story. Every time I turn my back, you're up to your tricks. Behaving like a mad dog, fancying every woman in sight. Goodness knows where you get your energy from. You never seem to have anyone I'm here. And don't you go pulling your face at me behind my back, Stanley Ogden. I shall get such a thick ear, you'll have to hold your head on one side. I wasn't fancying any woman. That was Eddie's bird, not mine. Can I just remind you of your actual words, Stanley? Because they've stuck in my mind like porridge to a pan. Gone home to fetch your mate, hasn't she? She's gone home to fetch your mate. Oh, you should have heard yourself. All but frothing at the mouth. That was only a joke, pulling at his leg. Oh, I quite agree with you, Stanley. It certainly were a joke. Because from what I remember of your performance, the very idea of you doing anything to interest a woman, let alone please her, is like expecting to find a whale in a tin of sardines. If you don't build up, you'll get a thick ear. Try it. Go on, just you try it. You'll threaten me once too often. I walked out once, remember? And you'll try my patience once too often and all. And you can tell that lump of lard you call a mate not to bring his trollop round here again. Right, I'll be off then. Yeah, OK, love. I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, Gail, I'll ask what if Saturday night's OK instead. Right. Yeah. Tara. Gail a bit off colour, is she? Hmm? 
Yeah, I don't know. You was to get down with that paper in the morning, you. I don't know what you find so interesting in them. It's all doom and gloom. Somebody causing trouble for somebody else and enjoying every minute of it. I said it's Gail off colour, Brian. No. Well, she's hardly had a work for cat this morning. You two not had a row again, have you? Sorry, love. You shouldn't ask that. It's none of my business, is it? Have you? She's upset, if you must know. What for? Friday. Friday? We invited Rodney's girl around for a meal, and Gail was going to do the cooking. But you've invited Vera and, and Jack, Jack instead. Oh, right. Exactly. But don't worry about it. I'll put them off till Saturday. That's if you're not expecting anybody on Saturday. Well, I were right to know. Ah, oh, you weren't. But that doesn't stop her from being upset, does it? I mean, I'm not upset. Friday night, Saturday night, what difference does it make? But Gail's upset. But she'll get over it. It's not terminal. Hey, don't be so flaming callous. Look, I'm being practical. This is your house, so you've got first choice. It's a fact of life, isn't it? Fascinating, aren't they? Interesting. Huh? Oh. Your ways, the way you do things. Everything with a bit of a swagger, even combing your hair. Annoy you, does it? Nah, just makes me think. What? Don't matter. Right. I'm ready. Right. We'll go out through its side door. We won't, you know. Well, they'll both be in the shop at this time. They'll not see us. Wrong. Wrong tactics, darling. Why? If it saves me some bother. There won't be any bother. You don't know Reenie. She can freeze ice cream can that one at 20 yards when she's vexed. You just leave her to me. She'll be sending me invitation cards before I'm finished with her. You think you can twist every woman right round your little finger, don't you? I can. They expect it. So I oblige. You thinking of doing this again, then? Like tonight. You cheeky devil. What are you? Give us a kiss. Was it afters or starters? Please yourself. Roll on eight o'clock. Is that what time you'll be back? Oh, about then. No point in taking me a bag, is there? Oh, aren't you committing yourself leaving that? I'll keep another in the cab, just in case. Do you know I wouldn't be at all surprised? Right, come on then. And don't say I didn't warn you. This might not be as easy as you think. And tens a pound. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I nearly forgot. Uh, would you like a malt loaf, Mrs Walker? They're just fresh in. No, thank you, dear. Just a mite stodgy for my palate. I prefer a wafer-thin biscuit. <laughs> yes, of course. So leave me to ask. <laughs> Hello, Mrs Walker. You're out and about early. Rini, Al? Yeah, it's true what they say about the North. You're very hospitable people. Thanks for having me, Rini, and you, Governor. And how's my favourite pub, darling? Oh, well, suit yourself. Cheers. Oh, hey, it's all right for some, isn't it? Is it something I've said? I rather think you have touched the nerve, Mrs Duckworth. Do you know what I always say about Bet? She can only be as outrageous as she's allowed to be. That's what I always say about Bet. Good morning. Well, I suppose you could be right, kid. A packet of fags, two brown cakes, cheese and tomato, and, um... Oh, I think I'll have one of these malt loaves, because they look nice, don't they? <laughs> What's your missus on? Well, what do you want? Nothing. Well, nothing of a material nature, that is. Oh, well, that makes a change. You know, I think you deliberately skint yourself of everything just so you can always be on the cadge. It's easier than working for a living. Hilda. I haven't come for an up and a downer. You're very wise. I've come as a man of peace. On here stands in lumber after last night, and I feel a bit responsible. Seems it was my bird I had here. I mean, Stan didn't even know she was going to be here. Well, not Pat. We were more than ready to take advantage, though, weren't we? I mean, he was hoping there were six more at home like her. All trollops. Pat's not a trollop. Well, she's sort of vivacious, that's all. Mm. That's what you call her. Any road, it doesn't matter now. Oh, are you prepared to let bygones be bygones, then? Do you know you've got a very forgiving soul, Hilda? No. No, I just mean I know what Stan's like, that's all. 
Well, I know what fellas are like. <laughs> we can feed you, look after you, love you even. The only time the sap ever rises is when you get a whiff of cheap scent. It's all very sad. Yeah, well, your lot shouldn't keep wearing it, should they? No, that's true, I suppose. We're our own worst enemies. Anyway, I think you find Pat isn't quite like that. She's a very nice girl. Well, she's a good conversationalist. You know, we're going to have to put a fire in the front parlour for you and your lady friends, aren't we? Hey, that'd be nice. Until the weather gets a bit warmer, not to mention drier. Oh, go on, you can bring her round if you want. Stan gets too upset, we can always throw a bucket of water on him, can't we? <laughs> Ilja, you are a princess. That is the daughter of a queen. And if I'd have had a shave, I'd give you a kiss. Well, beggars can't be choosers. Oh, yeah, weren't too bad, were it? It was very nice. And do us a favour. What? Tell Stan. Definitely. There you are, gentlemen. Thanks, President. Right. Um, who's made the soup today, Chuck? Oh, Mrs. Walker. Oh, good, in that case, I'll have a bowl. You mean if I'd have made it, you wouldn't? <laughs> well, it's just that when Mrs. Walker makes it, I mean, she makes it like she's creating a masterpiece. It's her way, isn't it? No offence to you, love, of course. Well, offence taken, Bert Tilsley. My soup's as good as her soup. Thank you. I don't know, you can't win, can you? Well, you did ask for it, didn't you? I know. I only came in here to get away from another hour, Tom, and all. Cheers. Cheers, mate. They're a funny breed, though, women, aren't they? I mean, it's hard to fathom them out sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah, the trick is to go along with them. Not too far. Just far enough to make them think that you're in sympathy with them. That's the trick. Yeah, well, I do that all the time, but sometimes, well, they get a bean upon it and it's hard to shift it. I mean, usually it's about summer and now and all. No, I look at Ivy and it's very hard for me to sort of think of them as equals sometimes. Well, don't go letting them know any of that, you know. I mean, you'd be in trouble nowadays. True. Yeah. Hello, love. Are you on your own? Ah, well, it's coming to end a week into everybody's skin. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'll have a bottle of lime. Oh, Where'd you manage to get your brass from? <laughs> Out of his pocket, kid, where else? Hey, not that he'd notice. Hey, uh, you were flying your car, weren't you, last night? Meaning? Well, you're not going to tell me you slept on the sofa, are you? Well, if you did, you must be there, I've not got a sofa, love. Come on, I want to see you. I'll tell you something that won't impress, though. Greeny. Oh, her face is like thunder after you, John. Is that right? Very yeah. good, Betty. You could have been a bit more discreet. I mean, flaunting him like that in front of Mrs. Walker. No wonder Reeny was upset. I happen to like him, Betty. A lot. <laughs> I suppose we could put Vera and Jack off till Saturday, let Brian and Gail have the mates round on Friday as arranged. But it's Vera and Jack's wedding anniversary on Friday, so I suppose that makes it a special sort of a day for them. <laughs> Shouldn't think Jack Duckworth would want reminding of his wedding day. Vera neither, for that matter. I thought you were asleep. You joking? Who do you think you've been talking to for the last five minutes, the cat? <laughs> do you think we should put Vera off, then? Well, I didn't say that. Well, what are you saying? Now, I am keeping out of it. Got nothing to say on the matter. I agree with our Brian. I think it's women's territory. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day is exactly the same to a working fella. Very, very boring and usually hard. Any road up. Don't worry about me, will you? Ta-ra. I'll see you at tea time. I feel very sorry for you, I don't think. Hello, Rob. Hey, listen, you feel sorry for me, don't you? Not especially, why? Ah, well, if only you knew the burdens us fellas have to bear. But you see, you're a woman. You've no conception either. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Scoring, Tim. Take no notice. He has these dues, especially when he thinks he's being hard done to. But don't we all? I mean, there's you as well, isn't there? Brian been talking again, has he? Now, come off it, Gail. I am his mother. Ah, Brian, don't stand a chance, love, if I make my mind up to get something out of him. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Look, I've been talking to Bert. We can easily put Vera and Jack off. Brian's already told Rod to come round Saturday now. Oh. I suppose that solves that, then. Yeah. 
But it doesn't really, does it? Not as far as you're concerned. Look, I know I'm being childish. It's just another of the snags of living in somebody else's house. We'd arranged for Rod to come Friday night. So Friday was the night I was looking forward to, not Saturday. But then suddenly he can't, because it's not my house, and I'm just kidding myself again. So I got upset. Brian don't understand why I should. Now that it was Bert. Do you? Of course I do. I'll just say this, love. I know you want your own house, and I think you should have it. But I like you living here as well. You mean you like Brian living here? Is that so terrible? No. But it can't go on forever. I realise that. It's all right, then. Look, I'm sorry if I embarrass you this morning in front of Annie Walker and Vera. You didn't embarrass me, you embarrassed yourself. Yeah, I weren't embarrassed. Why should I be? Come on, pet. Walking through shop as large as life with your fancy man. He is not my fancy man, really. Oh, whatever he is, then. It was just as if you were saying, look what I've got. Well, I didn't mean it to look like that. Yes, well, that's what it looked like. Well, it is my flat and I am over 21. We know all about that. Well, then. Well, it's just that I don't like the idea of a complete stranger being on these premises all night. There's a lot of valuable property, such as that drink, for instance. Oh, come on, Reenie. Danny's no thief. He's no angel, either. Yes, well, that's my problem, isn't it? Anyway, I promise I'll try and keep my private life a lot more private in future. Alf? Yeah. You can't keep it private in a place this size. Well, at least she admits there's a problem. Oh, well. Admitting it's one thing. Doing something about it is quite another. <laughs> do you know, I bet if I struck a match there'd be an explosion in here. Yes, Betty, what can I do for you? Bah, heck, you painted that smile on fast enough, Alf. I'll, uh, I'll have my loaf and a packet of tea bags, love. It's bet and uh, you know who, isn't it? He's only moved in, that's all. Oh, now, that's an exaggeration. Well, it's as good as. Oh, well, I mean, that's his style, isn't it? There's one consolation, lovey. It doesn't usually stop long. If else his experiences are anything to go by. That's just what I said this morning. Yes. Put them on the bill, don't you? Tell them. You know... Bet doesn't mean anything by it. I mean, it's just Bet being Bet. And she does like him. Really. Well, to tell. Oh, Betty, you don't fancy a malt loaf. They're not going very well, these malt loaves, are oh, they? Shut up about flaming malt loaves! Sorry. It's only us. You're not in the buff under the sun lamp, are you? No. Still, it's always worth checking, isn't it? Hey, this is Pat, who you met last night under adverse circumstances. Look, let's get something straight. It's his idea I'm here, not mine. Or after last night. Yeah, well, that's all water under the bridge. Isn't that right, Mrs O? Stanley, we've got company. Uh, oh. Oh, it's all right. You can speak to her. It's not prohibited. I told you, didn't I, Stan? I've uh, cleared the air, you know. Well, I wouldn't say you'd done that exactly, Eddie. It's just that I've sunk deeper into resignation, that's all. Sit yourself down, Joe. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, would you like a cigarette? I oh, wouldn't mind. Look, um, I I'm sorry if I uh, acted a bit hasty last night, but, well, it was a bit of a shock, you know, finding another woman here at that time. Oh, I bet it was, love. I think I'd have acted in exactly the same way in your position. Nothing personal, you understand. Oh, it's dead and forgotten, honestly. I'll get my jacket. We are going now, aren't we? I mean, I thought Eddie must have told you about me. Never even mentioned you. Oh, fellas. Not half civilised, are they? I don't think even Barbara Woodhouse could do much with him. Oh, oh, yeah, you mean that lady what trains dogs on the telly? <laughs> no, I dare say she couldn't. Do you mind? Do you watch telly a lot? Not much. Mind I like a good play, especially if it's got a romantic interest. Oh, yeah. And I like programmes about wildlife. Oh, here, yeah, you like me for that. Hey, did you see them programmes a couple of months ago? All about uh, the courting habits of various animals yeah, and birds. Yeah, I did. Mm. Pelicans. Yeah, and frogs. And newts as well. And rhinoceroses. Made me feel a bit funny, I can tell oh, you. Oh, did me as well. Well, I'm ready. 
Do you know, I think animals and birds and that have got sex just about right, if you ask me. You mean just for having young and that? Well, that's its function. Well, have a go in or not? I suppose it is. Do you know, I sometimes think it's more trouble than it's worth. Yeah. I mean, look at me, the lengths I go to. I don't dress up like this for me, you know. I do it for them. And is it worth it? Well, you don't get a fair return for your capital outlay, that's for certain. Oh, you can say that again. <laughs> oh, look, I'm sorry, I'm not being very sociable, am I? Would you like a drink? Oh, I love one. Stanley, fetch us a couple of bottles out the kitchen. Glasses are on the draining board. No, I think that if we was to put as much effort into looking after number one as we do to chasing after fellas, we'd rule the world. Oh, we would, because we're basically more intelligent. Oh, that's very true. Do you know, I think you'd better get a couple of bottles for us and all stand, because I don't think you and Hilda are going out tonight. How come she gets on so well with all my birds? I'm going to stop bringing them here. And we're much tougher too. Oof. Stands off work a week if he sneezes. But our day's coming. And not before time. Fancy drink? No. Do you? No. What do you ask for then? Well, it's like my fancy one. You don't have to pander to me, you know. I'm not a gentle plant. I won't wilt and die just because I haven't got my own house. Yet. I've got no intentions of pandering you. Oh? Why not? Oh, flaming Harry. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> hey. I hope I don't make a mess of this meal on Saturday night. You'd better not after all this hassle. Supposing I do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get me mum to do the cooking before she goes out. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny me. Oh. Where's your mouth? They've got the Legion. Oh, I actually did say. It was just about Friday night. Oh, I don't tell us you're not coming. Well, not exactly, but I think Jack's gone a bit potty. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's new? Well, he's booked us all a meal, kill it, brown bowl. Just come home tonight and told me. Give me 30 quid for some new gear. Do you know, I think he's either going potty or he's got another woman. I mean, I should be so lucky. Right, then I'm off, kid. I'll see ya. See ya. What oh, credit? Oh, well. We're going to have Rodney's bird around for a meal Friday and Saturday night now. <laughs> it must be joking. <laughs> Just as I like it, cloudy and warm. Have yourself, have one yourself. I can't. Why not? I can't criticise you. I take drinks off, yeah. can I? And for a man who's supposed to have turned over a new leaf, he's spending an awful lot of time in here. I've got a pass for tonight. Oh, well, I'll have to have a word with Rita then, won't I? If she's taking the pressure off you, that's not very wise in your case, cos you'll end up going to dogs again, don't you? <laughs> Do you know she's cheekier than me, yeah, and that's saying something. It's part of her charm. Isn't that right, Fred? True. Uh, well, I know somebody that thinks you have as much charm as Arthur Brick. Elsie Tanner. I've just passed her house now. She's sharp in her claws. Dan was Elsie's lodger, Vera. Get it right, love. Mm -hmm. I thought you'd run away to sea. I'm a very bad sailor. Mm -hmm. Careful. We're being watched. So? Evening, Reed. Evening, Gather. Can I get you a... Oh, uh, no, th I've just got one in, thank you. Well, and that's young. I'm not going anywhere. Very friendly. What did I say? What are you drinking? I'll have a scotch lump. Hey, you'll be sorry, lady. I'll risk it, Betty. He's obviously thinking of stopping. Now, you don't know that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he does, she goes. He's not using my house as a DOS house, because that's what he's doing, you know. And she's far too besotted to see it. What is this like? Good evening. Lovely weather for the time of the year. Just got in? About ten minutes ago. Uh, only we never heard you. No, well, I gave me trumpeters the night off, then fanfares were giving me a rake. <sighs> no, only we were making a cup of tea, you know, in the living room, and we were listening out for you, thinking that uh, if you'd had a busy night, you might fancy one. Oh, that's kind. I'm making myself one tough. Oh. oh, and uh, you wouldn't have heard us come in, Flower, because we were very quiet. We? Me and Dan. Well, you did say you wanted me to keep my private life much more private in future, didn't you? Only being discreet's never been my strongest point. But for you and Alf, anything. Can't say fairer than that, can I? Well, night God bless. Sweet dreams. See you in the morning. Look, I've told you six times, Clothiers. 
I'm behind hand with the spring cleaning. I promised her faithfully I'd make an early start on them lavy walls today. But why have I got to get up with her milk? Because, Stanley, if there's one thing 30 years of marriage to you has taught me, it's never to go out of this house leaving you lying rotting in bed. I don't know why you wash those walls at all. Only get wrote on again. Look, I've just said. It's what's commonly known as spring cleaning. And we are in the season what is commonly known as spring. Are we having that rubbish again? Do you mean that rubbish about me wanting a new hairdo and a new frock and not looking like two pennies of scrag end for once in my life? That sort of rubbish. Yeah. No, Chuck, not that. No, the rubbish I had in mind was more, uh, more along the lines of holidays. That kind of rubbish. What do you mean, holidays? What the rest of the country, Ogden's accepted, have been planning ever since they got Christmas out the road. We'll have a holiday. When will we? May Day. It's bank holiday, isn't it? We'll have a day out. Phew, a day out. Yeah. A bus ride to Blackpool in the rain. Well, it may not be raining. It always rains on bank holiday. That's when it doesn't snow. No, uh, what I had in mind was more like, uh, well, a hotel with a restaurant and white tablecloths and waiters and long, cool drinks in a deck chair by the swimming pool and blue skies and sunshine. And not a flipping lavy wall in sight. Where are we going to get the money for a place like that? Well, it's amazing how other folks seem to manage it. How do you know they do? Because, Stanley, if you look at a picture of any beach on the Costa del Watsit, you will notice it's filled with golden brown bodies. Now, if you look a bit closer, you'll see that them bodies do not belong to performing monkeys, but to ordinary human beings, men and women like you and me. Only difference being they're there and we're rotten here. We're on a day trip to Blackpool if we're lucky. Well, if she's promised to be more discreet in future. Oh, well, that just won't do at all. Why not? What, in this street? Do you mean to tell me that nobody knows that he's stopping here every other night? One or two of them know already. Well, you don't know it's going to be that often. Oh, come on. She's besotted by him. It'll be as often as she can drag him here. Anyway, that's not the point. I don't care if he stays one night a week or one night a month. It just, it just isn't right. I don't like it in my house. It's not right. Is it because you don't like him or because they're not wed? Well, both. Oh, I'm not being old-fashioned, Alf, but if Bet got herself a decent fella, somebody proper, there'd be nobody more pleased than me. Even if he slept here? Look, if he was a decent fella, he wouldn't carry on like that, would he? I mean, he'd find some, make some proper arrangement with her. Well, that and this one will. Come on. You've seen him. Can you honestly believe that? Oh, well, what do you want to do about it? Well, I'm going to tell you we just can't have it. I mean, it'll only bring her trouble and tears. It's all for her own good. And do you think she'll believe that? Sure. <laughs> Morning. Early rises, I see. Hey, you best get yourself shifted if you're going to get to Worcester and back. Ah, uh, this one's a doddle. Here, no DM5. Uh, no, not very well. Ah, uh, some lovely country round here. Vale of Evesham. You know where your asparagus comes from? Cotswold Hills. You want to take the mice on a crafty weekend sometime? You go bundle on that. I dare say. Oh, well. I'll see you later then, love. We need like you should be back about five. Mm -hmm. Drive careful. You know what them other lunatics are like. Don't know, love. Go on. He's, um, he's coming back again, then? Yeah. Three nights on the trot. My fatal charm must be working at last. Bet, you know, we should have a talk about this. Yes, yeah, sure, Cock, but not just now. I don't like hanging about like this. Could give the place a bad name. Give the place a bad name. Oh, listen, I forgot the salt. I remembered as soon as you got out the door, I used the last in the tin last night. Oh, well, it's all right, because I've got to go out again later to the post office. How's it going? Oh, fine. Still got a couple of letters to do for Mr. Bramwell's and then those envelopes for Hooper's and uh, that's it. Oh, well, let's hope that that advertisement attracts some more business. Oh, give it a chance. It was only in last night's paper for the first time. Oh, I know, but I'm impatient. Now we've started, I can't wait to see it really taking off. Yeah. Coronation Street Secretarial Bureau. Headquarters in Weatherfield, branches in London, Paris and New York. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have Tracy as our public relations girl, won't we, Tracy? <laughs> yes. Would you like to help Mummy and Auntie Emily to make a lot of money? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Steady <laughs> on. <laughs> She's getting to be a little gold digger as it <laughs> is. <laughs> Yes. yes. I think we'll have to find you a rich husband, madam. Oh, she's going we? to have a career first. Oh, yes, that's right. Be independent, not a useless twit like your mum. Yes. <laughs> no. 
don't want to be that, do you? Do you want to be a big girl? Coronation Street Secretary will be all right. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yes, yes, that's right, we do. Oh, I, I think we could manage that. Uh, about 12. Uh, right, you, you have the address. Uh, oh, yes, of course, it's in the advertisement. Uh, right, Mr Bateman, we'll see you then. Bye. Customer? I'm sure I know that voice. Bateman. I think client's a better word, incidentally, don't you? He wants some advice about a circular letter he's thinking of sending out. What business is he in, did he say? Oh, I didn't ask. I wonder if we should. Ask him, I mean. Ah, oh, still, if he's in anything shady, he's not likely to tell us in advance, is he? Oh, you don't think... Look, that... Emily, we are business women. Tough, Langton and Bishop, Ms. I mean, we're not going to get to be champagne-swilling executives if we're going to get collywobbles over every little job now, are we? True. But right now, I'll just settle for a nice cup of tea. <laughs> yes, me too. Betty? Yes, lovely. Honest opinion. Oh, and anybody says that to me, my first instinct is to run a mile. You know my blue Lurex frock? Yes, love. What do you think about it? Oh, well, um, it's, it's, it's eye-catching. Hmm. Oh. Well, I'd have preferred sensational, irresistible, knockout, but eye-catching will do. That and me black, which do I look best in? Well, it depends where you're going, love it. I've no idea. Dan's coming back early and taking me out on town. I couldn't care less as long as I'm with him. Hey, he's really got you hooked, hasn't he? I don't know why. He's not particularly good-looking. He's no superstar. He don't sweep me off my feet with a load of smooth chat. If I look a mess, he tells me. Maybe that's what it is. He's cut through the usual soppy routine and we've got to know each other face to face. And when I'm with him, I feel as though I belong to somebody. We're a pair, Betty. A team. I've been on my own for so long, I forgot what it's like to have somebody of your own in the morning to wake up to. Bet, love. Hmm? Um, are you sure? I mean, you're not going too fast. I probably am. But they're not something you can control, are they, emotions? Oh, no, but I mean, what about Alf and Rini? What about them? Well, I mean, I presume that he stayed there again last night. Well, it is my flat, Betty, mm. and I pay me rent, and what goes on inside there's my business. There's mm. not a lot they can do about it, is there? No, but you do have to live with them, love. Oh, I'll cope. It's just giving them time to get used to the mm. idea. Give them another couple of weeks, they'll be treating Dan like one of the family. And now poor soul's got shingles for her trouble. Oh, they are horrible things. I think I'll treat her. I'll take a can of stout, love, as well. Can of stout, though. I mean, she was doing her favour, you know, babysitting for a while, they went to this wedding. Mind you, she knew kids had got chicken pox, but you don't think about it, do you? Oh! Oh! What the heck was that? Oh, it was just me being butterfingered. Oh, it's all right, I'll just... Well, uh, I'll just straighten up with you on Friday for these, I love. I'll take these cakes, they should cheer up a bit, to take a mind off her itching. Right, that's it. That's gone far enough it now. It weren't my fault, they weren't stacked properly. Look, you've been on edge about this silly bet nonsense for long enough. If it bothers you that much, I'll talk to her. Oh, will you? Well, like I say, I'm not having you having no nervous breakdown. One of the family's enough. Emily, this is Mr. Bateman. Good heavens. Well, what a turn up. I uh, suppose it'd be a silly question to say you two know each other. Well, me and Mrs. Bishop, we've had quite a few close encounters over bangers and mess. Isn't that right? Is that some sort of joke? I'm not with you. Uh, Mr. Bateman's here on business, Emily. Is he, though? Look, love, me and you might not have seen eye to eye in the past, but this is legit. You've turned your buttered buns into big business, and I've joined the ranks of the self-employed. And I want some work doing, OK? Of course it is. Great. And tell your friend here to stop staring at me as though this is a sender. I mean, I didn't know it was a blooming agency, did I? Would it have made a difference if you had? Can you do the job, as per your head? Naturally. Well, in that case, no, it wouldn't have made a difference. Like I said, I'm a businessman now. Got, we've got my own van a couple of weeks ago, light haulage. And this is the gem. It's a rough outline of the services I provide. And what I would like you two ladies to do is to knock it into shape. You know the kind of thing, make it sound attractive, competitive, do a good selling job. I mean, grammar was never my strong point. And when that's done, I'm going to have some leaflets done and pay for this whole district. Ah, uh, what's 
a nice London boy like you doing round here. I like it. And the, the natives are friendly. Yes, well, when would you want this stuff for, Mr Bateman? Say five o'clock. And it's a uh, Jeff. Tomorrow? Today. I don't know if we could manage that. We are rather busy at the moment. I'm sure you can pull the stops out if you really try. And what do you say, Mrs Langton? Well, say six. I'll see you then. And uh, thanks very much. He was exceedingly familiar with Gail when I worked in the cafe and rude to me into the bargain. In fact, he was instrumental in my leaving. Oh, come on, Emily. You'd have left there anyway, eventually. It was never your scene whilst Mr Sedgwick took over. Anyway, seems OK to me. And he certainly seems very keen on his business. He's a hustler. If by that you mean he's got get up and go, then I reckon we could do with one or two more like him. So how is she in herself like? Oh, she's depressed. I told you what it to be a bit before she's back. Who's this? One of the women at work. She's got shingles. Oh, as nasty as that. Hey, I bet her Arthur's champing at the bit, cos he won't like stopping in every night. I should give him a ring, Vera. Tell him, you know, you'll take him off the hands like. Hey, I might just do that. Be a break for him. She's the original Good Samaritan, this one. Would you like to help your mates out when you can? Hey, and I've got just the right place for taking and all. Full of exciting possibilities. Hey, don't you start putting any more ideas in her head. She's bad enough as it is. <laughs> no, I only meant the bingo. Hey, there's a thousand pound jackpot there. Wouldn't mind having a crack at that if I could get the night off. Well, you can't, because better already is. Go on. Waste of time going there. You never know anybody who wins. <laughs> you never know, we mate. <laughs> Same thing. Well, that's your right. You know, it's like the curse of King Tut. Once you know an oggy like, you're doomed. <laughs> you shouldn't bother, love. Take him to the back seat of the Roxy instead. <laughs> That little shoe man on Rosalind Street, he doesn't shut for dinner, does he? Uh, Bet, have you got a minute? Not now, love. I've got to get back to work. No, it's got to be now. I can't put it off any longer. I'm sorry, I'm not having Rini in a state. A state about what? Well, you and this fella of yours. Dan, yeah? Well, I'm sorry, Bet, but I can't have you stopping in flat. Alf and I have discussed it. I see. Been talking about me behind me back, have you, as per usual? Now, there's no need to take that attitude, Bet. I mean, we have talked about it because we wanted to find out how we felt about it and what we were going to do about it. And what exactly are you going to do? Well, it's, it's quite simple, really. Go on. Look, we don't want any trouble, Bet. I mean, as you say, you are a grown woman and you've every right to lead your, lead your life as you see fit. Thank you. On the other hand, this is our home and you must respect our feelings. Come to the point, will you? Well, if you want to go on staying here, I must ask you not to bring your boyfriend round here to stay the night. Not tonight or any time. I see. Or? Or I'll have to ask you to leave. <laughs> Dinner's in the oven, dried up as usual. I like it like that. Got any brown sauce? Oh, the galloping gourmet to Weatherfield. Yeah. Do you know, I bet if I served you stewed boot soles, you'd tuck in, provided they was covered in brown sauce. <laughs> I sometimes think it's a good job we're not rich. How do you make that out? Well, smoked salmon and champagne be wasted on you. I like plain food. I'm a working man. Oh, that's another fairy story. Like them tea leaves you left this morning. What about them? Well, they showed money, didn't they? Oh, don't worry, I'm not getting excited. I mean, we both know there's about as much chance of good luck coming our way as there is of you being picked for Mr Universe. No, it's no use, Stan. I've lost my innocence. And to think when I wed you, I were an optimist. Have you done? Yeah. Good. Nip down the shop and get a bottle of sauce. Sharpish. He's special to me, this one. He's important. Can't you see that? It makes no odds, love. Don't start calling me love now. No, but we don't want to fall out. You could have fooled me. You've been trying to get rid of me for months. You're just using this as an excuse. Yes, Hilda. Oh, oh, it's all right, I'm uh, not in any rush if you're uh, occupied. No, I'm not. Now, what do you want? Oh, uh, a bottle of brown sauce, please. He'll not touch his dinner without it. Funny devil's fellas, aren't they? More trouble than they're worth in the long run. Am I right? Who am I to argue with the Oracle, Hilda? 
Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's not ready yet. I mean, you did say six o'clock. Yeah, well, I've got a dash off. I've got to see a prospective customer in Hardwick. I just thought I'd pop in on the off chance. Yeah, well, the thing is, it would have been ready, but there were just one or two points I wanted to ask you about first. Sure, I'll call around tomorrow. We can sort it out then. I haven't got time now. Uh, the old man not home yet? Old man? Your friend did say Mrs Langton. Or did I hear her wrong? Just my luck. Keep smiling. No, nothing's wrong. Well, nothing that won't keep until I see you. Look after yourself, love. Try. He's had a blowout on M5. Can't get it fixed till tomorrow morning. I see. He's that type of fella you see, Betty. Not your nine to five type. You've got to take him how he is. Oh, and you're willing to. Oh, yes. Even give up your home for him? Well, it's only a roof. I mean, I can get that anywhere. But a man, one I care about, that's different. Oh, Bet, love, are you sure about that? I mean, you've hardly known him five minutes and you seem to be seeing him as a, as a long-term prospect. I mean, apart from anything else, is he free? He's divorced. Doesn't mean to say that he's not got somebody else, you know. Well, there was Elsie. Ah, and he chucked her up when it suited him. For me, Betty, for me. Well, if that's what you think, love. I know he did. And I've made my mind up. Mm. They can stuff the flame in flat. Oh. <laughs> Two, yeah. And a tin of salt. Do you know, it's the third time I've been out today and forgotten it. And I just can't eat a tomato or an egg right. without... Uh, that's what I owe you, up to date. Rent, fag money, the lot. I think you'll find it's all there. Oh, but there was no... Nick. Look, we never said... Didn't you? I think you did say loud and clear. Out. But not right away. We only said... That I could stay if he didn't. Well, as it happens, he won't be coming back tonight. But he will be back here later in the week. And I'm not bringing him nowhere where he's not welcome. Now, I've got my fella and I've got my life to lead and nothing's going to stop me. God knows I've messed up enough chances in the past. But why tonight? Where will you sleep? It's a bit late in the day for you to be concerned about that, isn't it, lovey? I'll find somewhere, even if it's only the red wreck. So you can stuff your rules and your regulations and your rotten flat. Who needs them? How's it doing, then, your new venture? Oh, it's getting off the ground very nicely. The only trouble is I'm going to have to start taking more exercise. Honestly, I've got out of the habit of sitting typing all day. So I've had to come out for a walk round now. I'm stiff as a board. Oh, yeah. Any time you want your back rubbing, love, just give us a shout. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, is uh, Beck not in tonight, then? Uh, no, it's a night off. I'm sorry to hear she's having a spot about that. Is she? Oh, yeah, with Alfa Marina. They don't like the way she's carrying on at all. Mind you, I must say I can't blame them. I wouldn't like it going on under my roof. I don't suppose it does go on under your roof, Hilda. I don't suppose it's gone on under your roof for years. <laughs> there he is. It's all his fault. What have I done now? Wasted his blooming evening. Four quid down, drain and note to show for it. Yeah, if he hadn't mentioned that flaming thousand pound jackpot, I could have had a cosy night in with my old fella. Aye, who's old fella? Anybody. Yeah. Who did win it? Nobody. You mean it's still running on? Yeah. Oh, aye, it'll be on again tomorrow night. Uh, give us a lager and lime fed drown my sorrows. Thanks. Oh, and give her one and all, as long as it's a cheating. I might as well treat you and all, Hilda. I mean, what's money when you have to? Oh, no, Tart, not just now, thanks all the same. I've got to get back to Stan. Only a yard outside the penalty area. Wonder if Everton can do the trick here. Prepares to marshal his defences. Oh, watch him, Matt. Oh, yeah, and enjoying every minute. I just nodded off. Good. You'll not mind me disturbing you then. Especially when you hear it's good news. All right. Now, you know that omen I seen in your tea leaves this morning about money? All that rubbish. Who says so? You did. Said not to get excited about it. Ah. That was before I had the sign. Well, go on. Ask me what sign. What sign? There's a thousand pound jackpot to be won at the bingo tomorrow night. They was just saying in the pub. So? So? Well, can't you see your big soft lump? It all fits together. You don't think you've got a cannon else chance of winning that? Oh, I'm not pinning the hopes on it. No, I'm not that daft. I've had too many disappointments in my time. No, what I am saying is, we'd be even more daft to ignore the signs. Now, we'll have to go. I'm not going to bingo. Yes, you are, because it was your teacup, weren't it? Fellas don't go to bingo, it's Rashi's job. I'll be the only fella there. Oh, well, don't worry, Stan. They'll all have their minds on the bingo. They'll be far too busy to tear the clothes off your back in a mad, passionate frenzy. And if they do, I'll defend you. You're always taking a mickey, aren't you? 
Always treat me like a flipping skull kid. You can't be serious. If we win that jackpot, Stan, I'll take it serious. A thousand quid. I'll take it very serious indeed. Who's that? It's me. Bed! Oh, come in, lovey. Can I come in? Yes. I saw your lights were still on. Oh. I've just made myself a hot drink. Do you want one, Doug? <sighs> I won't mind. I'm frost through. Well, you have that one, lovey. I've not started it. I'll make myself another in a minute. Hey, I Well? Well, I got chucked out. No, that's not exactly true. I walked out. Well, half and half. Anyway, I slung me out. Was that wise? No idea. I just did it. I couldn't stand them trying to tell me how to run my life anymore. And don't tell me they were doing it in my interests, because the only person who does out in my interests is me. Where have you been till this time? Walking. Sat in bus station cafe. You see, I would have phoned Dan, but I don't know where to reach him. You were the only other person I could come to. But you did right, lovey. Problem is, by the time I'd paid them what I owed them, it's left me flat broke well paid day. I couldn't even afford a crummy hotel bed. Hey, you can sleep here. You know you can. I were hoping you'd say that, Betty, love. You never were slow to take him, were you? <laughs> I can be, when it suits me. <laughs> well, then what are you going to do, love? Tomorrow, you mean? Well, I mean, generally. You do seem to be burning your boats all round. Oh, I've got Dan. He'll look after me when he knows what's happened. Is that why he did it? To force his hand a bit? You know, I never thought of it in that light before. I suppose it could have been at the back of my mind, yeah. Hey, kid, them Robertses could just have done me a favour, don't you think? Yeah. I'll just go make me drink. <laughs> there we are, love. So. Anything else? Oh. What's oh. up, love? I'm just having a struggle with myself. I'm looking at that cream slice, but I've got to be strong. Well, stop looking. Now, come on, get gone. They'll be wanting the biscuits. Oh, I don't care. I'm weak. I'm going to have it. Well, it's not for me to stop you. Er, uh, that one. That one? Yeah. Don't bother wrapping it. I mean, I can't take it over there and eat it, can I? Mmm. <laughs> oh, charming. Well, I can't. Them girls would go mad if they saw me eating this. Uh, do you mind me eating it in here? No, no, carry on. We've got a brush. We can go around afterwards. Mmm. Mind you, I have heard you're very particular about what people do around there. That'll be 15, please. You give it a marching order, don't you? Look, mind your own business. Oh, well, don't mind me. It just seems funny to me that's all coming from some people. Because if some people mind their own business, instead of telling people what they can and can't do, and then chucking them out with no roof over their head. If you're talking about Bet, we haven't chucked her out. We haven't chucked anybody out. You see how it gets round? She left of her own accord, and that's a fact. So you can go back there and broadcast that. It's them shoes. They're no help at all, you know. No good when you're walking about all day. Well, they're the only ones I've got, apart from me good ones, and they're even higher. Mm. Well, I think it affects your circulation. I mean, that's what makes your legs swell, I'm sure of it. Well, it's not me old leg, Betty. It's just me ankles. OK, then, it's your ankles. But you need some proper shoes. I had up. Oh, tar cop, you're a chair. <sighs> And didn't you see anywhere decent? Huh. I've seen one place. Fifteen quid a week he wants for it. What? Perhaps that's what they're asking. Betty, it wasn't fit for gassing rats in. Oh, mm. Lovely. But there must be other places. Sorry, love, we've just let it. Huh. You could throttle them. <laughs> can tell when they're lying. Is mm. it my face or what? Well, you know, people are funny. Who knows that better than mm. me? You want to take your time, love, you know, find somewhere decent. I know, but I don't want to impose on you forever. Go on, you're not imposing on me. I am, and I know it. You're very good. No. Well, the only awkward thing is, you know, when I meet uh, Reenie and Alf, it'll be a bit awkward then. Well, there's no call for you to fall out with them. Well, I know, I mean, I'm taking no sides. No one's asking you to. To be perfectly honest, you know, I can see both sides of it. I mean, I probably am a bit narrow-minded myself. If that's what you called it. And I think it was. I won't be bringing him here, Betty. I won't stop you bringing Luke, him, don't love. Worry. It, it's just... You're only embarrassing yourself, love. Yeah, well, well, I am. Love. Well, there's no need to. I respect your feelings. It'll be like a convent here. Well, 
that's just the way I've got used to it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it drops off. Oh. After the first few years of marriage, starts dropping off. What? Conversation. Oh. Well, they've done a survey, it were in the paper. Why marriages go on the rocks. Oh. And you know what they reckon? The main thing is when husband and wife don't do things together. Oh. And the rot starts with conversation. Squeeze that pot, will you? It's scandalous, you know, divorce nowadays. Shocking the figures for it. Uh. Only I've noticed myself, you know, Stan. We don't converse. We do. Oh, time was we did, but we don't. We're having a conversation now. Yeah, but you haven't got the faintest interest in what I'm saying, have you? It doesn't stop you, though, does it? I don't stop you. Oh, well, if that's your idea of a conversation. If you want to know what I think... I don't particularly. Oh, well, yeah, I see. How can we have a conversation? But if you want to know what I think, I think men and women cannot have a conversation. Why can't they? Well, because men's conversation is different to women's. According to you, then, everybody's going to get divorced. That's not conversation, that's the excuse. Any road. I think we should do more things together. We don't do enough, we should do more. Like what? Well, you could come with me to bingo. I am not going to bingo. What you're really saying is you don't want to be with your wife. No, I'm not. I don't want to go to bingo. Well, what'll you do tonight, then? Well, well I've got the Legion. Are you asking me to go to the Legion? You're going to bingo, aren't you? Look, you can go to the Legion any flipping time. Pity you can't pay a bit more attention to your wife and come to bingo. Especially when there's a thousand pound jackpot. You don't think we'll win that? Well, we won't if we don't go. Well, go on your own and you win it. Look, it were your tea leaves I saw the money in. Is that why you're dragging me to bingo? No, it's not. I'm dragging you to bingo because you're my husband and you're going to do what I want for a change. You can put all thoughts of the Legion right out of your head. Oh, uh, I hope it's not an awkward time. Oh, we're always open for business. This is Mrs. Langton and oh. it's... Uh, uh, Swain. Arnold Swain. Hiya. Oh, don't worry, it's indestructible. <gasps> Mrs. Langton's the secretarial sign line bookkeeper. Yep, and Tracy is the official stamp licker, aren't you, Trace? Your little girl? <laughs> yeah, my little girl, when she's good. Hello. That's a good girl. Come on, then, let's get you off to bed, madam. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Please. Oh, bye. Bye-bye. Come on. Oh, dear. Well, uh... I don't know if um, if you've any experience in retail trade, uh, shopkeeping. Oh, long years of it, I'm afraid. Oh, well, couldn't be better. Well, I have a shop, you see, and if I could uh, get these books off my back. Oh, yes, I know. Well, I'd have some time to myself, wouldn't I? Oh, I do know exactly what you mean. I have rather the opposite problem of too much time to myself, which is why... Uh... Oh, anyway, uh, is everything up to date? Well, um needs a, a bit of tidying up, you know, for an audit. But after that, I'd like you to, um, well, just go on. You know, for, a, for as long as you can stand it. Well, as long as we give satisfaction, I hope. And this is the... Um... Aye, this is the incriminating evidence. I very much hope you're joking. Oh, so do I. Oh, what kind of business is it? Take a guess. Oh, I don't know. Uh... Oh. Why do you want me to guess? Well, the other day, I was called some very fancy names by a very peculiar woman. Well, I'd say she was peculiar. Really? Why? Well, I was a heartless profiteer, trading in misery and death. Oh, and are you? Well, I never knew if I was. I got a, got a little petrol. So, what did you say to her? Well, I said to her, that's why I run a pet shop, because I hate animals. She wasn't listening. She pointed at my terrapin, screamed out that they were dying, went out and said she'd report me. Oh, I think you're right. She may have been peculiar. And terrapins is a soft spot with me. The way I keep them, it's claridges to a terrapin. Do you get a lot of that sort of thing? Oh, once or twice. When there's something in news about animals dying at the airport and that sort of thing, they think it's me. Well, don't worry. I, I have no moral objections to doing your books. Mm. You, uh, you don't keep a pet, do you? 
Well, I've had a rabbit, believe it or not, and I feed a stray cat. Oh, you want a dog? Well, hesitate to correct you, but I don't want a dog. Well, to change your life to have a dog? Perhaps I don't want my life changing. No, I'm... I'm not saying no. Uh, but dogs do, you know. That's the whole thing about a dog. Makes people more human. I see, so I'm not human enough. <laughs> I'd better shut up before I put my foot in it. Well, if you're happy to take on the books. Oh, uh, more than happy. Um, when I've been through, I shall probably want to, to ask some questions. Uh, well, yes, here. Here's my, my home phone number. Any time in the evening. Well. I've not offended you, have I? How do you mean? Well, saying about the dog or anything. Not at all. Good. Because some people are very anti-dogs, you know. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll wait for you to get in touch. Uh, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, um, have you seen a little turtle? A little green one? Yeah. Um, oh, don't uh, worry, I'll find it. Uh, <laughs> a spaniel. I can see you with a spaniel. Of course, I don't run to pedigree animals myself. But I definitely see you, Mrs Bishop with a pedigree animal. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, very much so. Men is a biological accident. Did you know that? They've done it. You what? They have. They've done it. Proved it scientist-like. Come on, Vera. How can men be an accident? A disaster? Yes. An accident? No. You only need the women to keep the race going. They've proved it. They've done it. Oh, I don't know. I feel some rubbish here, honest. Well, you shouldn't be listening. <laughs> I'm a connoisseur of rubbish, mate, standing here. Well, I still don't see myself here how men can be an accident. I mean, you've got... Men is the male, isn't they? And you've got the male in nature, haven't you? Oh, well, you have to ask scientists, not me. Well, you have, haven't you? I mean, there's a male and female everything. Can't all be just an accident, can it? Oh, well, I might have got it wrong, then. Here, don't you go getting no more in. It's time we was off. Mind you, when you look at Stan. <laughs> look, I don't want you going cross-eyed. You want a clear head for playing bingo. Are you going tonight, Nilda? Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, do you want a pole? Eh? You know, oh, we'll win split three ways. Oh, no, no, Ta. No, I'm going with Stan, you see. That's his own pole. Hey, I could see man going. <laughs> no, well. Mm. Do you know, it's a wonderful thing that after all these years of marriage, we can still enjoy doing things together. Give us a deal in there, friend, will you? Right. Are you going to bingo tonight, Stan? I've got to, haven't I? She's seen money in my tea leaves. Uh, I'll never be a rich man then. I use tea bags, sick. Well, thousand pound jackpot tonight, eh? Oh, but what's a thousand pound these days? I mean, it's not to get excited over, is there? Hey, you want to ask our Brian and Gail about that? Thousand pound make a sight bit of difference to them. You bet, I mean, they're just starting off, aren't they? I mean, a thousand pounds today. I mean, it's like sugar in your tea, isn't it? Oh, listen to Miss Moneybags. Mind you, I know what she means. I mean, at one time, a thousand pound. You said to keep it a fortune. What is it these days? One good dollar deal and blow a lot in. Mm. Is that what you do? Oh, aye. <laughs> Me and all. <laughs> come on, Stan, Stan, we was going. Yeah, oh, come on, I said. Keep your eye on that. And here, you better live up to your tea leaves, else I'll skin you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, girls. Tell me, Charles. We'll be slacking here tonight. Yeah, could be. Well, it's just possible I might want to slip off early. What do you think? I dare say, why? Well, he might be coming up later. There's oh. nothing definite. Oh, all right, well, if Fred's happy, so am I. Oh, well, I can't twist Fred. Uh, you've not got a spare key on you, have you? Just in case. Well, not on me, no. Do you think you'll be late? Well, I don't know, do I? Well, where do you think you'll be going? Oh, we'll think of somewhere. Yes. I suppose I could leave one out for you, but uh, I don't like doing it, you know. I suppose if we fancy a drink, it's anywhere but the Rovers. I suppose we'll give it a miss for a bit, won't we? Well, I suppose she'll be there. No reason why not. Well, you never know. She might have gone off with Milado in that 40 ton passion wagon he drives. I doubt it, love, I doubt it. Well, she's falling off. Well, it's none of our business now. Not anymore. But well, what have I been saying all day? Oh, it's just that it's all upset me as all this. Well, you wanted her gone. I know. All I'm saying is that you, well, you had a nice little gaff there. Other places? Oh, you want your head testing. Title to leave me all life. Yeah, but you were a bit tasty, love, walking out. He's been coming for ages. Well, I don't see he's all that special, any road. Is he? We'll leave him out of it, all right. Well, is he? I mean, is he worth chucking everything up for? Well, is he? 
I have not chucked everything up, have I? I've merely moved in with my good friend Betty until I find a new flat. That's just what I mean. You've got no place to call your own. No, but I can call me life my own, can't I? Is that the phone? I'll get it. You can get it here. Oh, there you go, now. You'll be having a midnight visitor. Oh, no, no. No, I made that very clear. That's what Alf said weeks ago. No. Oh, she wouldn't. You're leaving the key for her, Betty. I heard you discussing it with her. Thirty-three. Four and seven. Forty-seven. Two and nine. Twenty-nine. One and six. Sweet sixteen. Six and nine. Same birthday. Sixty-nine. Four bald men. Eighty-eight. Two little ducks, 22. Oh, flip. I think it's the same one with that hat line, I know. Hey, it is, you know. Some people. Hey, and I don't reckon much of this caller either. I don't reckon much of the flipping numbers he's calling. So, ball men, 88. If he goes on like this, I'm going to tell him. 80, 80, 80 and 88. 88, the claim is correct. Thank you. I'll tell you what, some of these calls, they think we're here for fun, you know. Do you know, I've been one off the line and one off the house both times last two games. Well, I wish you wouldn't nudge me, Elder. I've got my own cards here. It's like being sat next to a revolving door. I'm going for a leak. <laughs> it could be started. You can look the cards, or I can't be out. <laughs> Chef Club. Oh, these framing seats. Why don't I make them bigger? Oh, you know what he's doing, don't you? He's sliding after the bar early before the interval. <laughs> That's all the interest he takes. Eyes down there. Go on to your next game. Four and eight, forty-eight. I won't be seeing you till late then. No, I'll be coming back with you, love. Oh, only I thought it was him that phoned earlier. Yeah, he's got to stop in Birmingham. He's out of his hours. Oh, I'm oh, sorry to hear that, love. Yeah. Still, it's not every fella who'd bother to ring, is it? Mm. I mean, your average fella. What are they like? Mm. He's not average, Betty. He's definitely not average. Checking on two lines. Number seven. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Typical. Typical, man. Hey, you had a 43 there. Oh, look, what's the use of flaming coming if you miss them? I'm trying to mark too many, that's the trouble. It's all his fault. Well, it made no difference, any row, but all the same. Ain't it nice when they still enjoy doing things together after all these years? <laughs> Some deep breath this time, and it's your last game before the interval. And that means a jackpot. You're looking in for one thousand pounds. Hey, uh, do you want me? To, well, do you want me to mark one of stands for you, Elder? No, no, no time. You're looking no. in now for a thousand pounds. Eyes down, and it's eight and one, eighty-one, three and seven, thirty-seven. On its own, number two. Or one and three, thirteen. Two and eight. 28. 6 and 7, 67. On its own, number 9. 1 and 9, 19. 3 and 4, 34. 9 0, oh, blind 9. Line! I've got a line! This is the jackpot here. Yeah. Full house only for the jackpot. We're looking for the full house for the jackpot. Yeah. Thank you, madam. Four and eight, forty-eight. Three and eight, thirty-eight. On its own, the number five. Four and eight. Well, never mind. She'll do tomorrow. Oh, you'll be able to lay my hands on anything, really. I'm sure she's done it. Look, look, don't trouble yourself. I'll sooner come back when she's here. Just. Give me a moment. But I'd sooner come back when she's here. Well, Will she be on after? She's out visiting. What gone for? I couldn't say. I could call back. Well, it's getting a bit late, isn't it? Well, it depends. Uh, how long will she be? I'll get her to leave it out for you, and it'll be waiting for you if you call tomorrow. Uh, gone visiting with the old man, has she? Like her husband? No. Goodbye, Mr. Bateman. I only need the fives. On a turn, number eight. Five and six, fifty-six. Two and seven, twenty-seven. All the fours, 
44. 5 and 8, 58. 1 and 7, 17. 2 and 3, 22. Awesome, thank you. Must be some force working against me. I've never been that near a jackpot. You've been late to everything tonight, haven't you, Hilda? Only been a whisker, innit? I've won now, too. Story of my life is that. I'm gonna find that flaming husband of mine. Excuse me. Kill him. Hey, are you going to sit there? No. Let's wait till the tape mess up. <laughs> I think you've got a secret admirer. Oh? You've just missed it. Oh, just my luck. Who's this? Oh, I don't think you'd be all that keen. Oh, come on, any admirer's better than non kid. Oh, the young one. You were doing a circular letter or something? The, the one with the jacket? Oh, him. Mm. He was very persistent. He was obviously hoping you'd be here. Wanted to know when you'd be back. Wanted to know if he could call back later. And. Well, anyway, I saw him off politely, but firmly. Well, what did you want to do that for? Oh, Deirdre, it's hardly your time. Oh, isn't he? No, oh, really, he's obviously got no education at all. Well, neither have I, to speak of. There is a difference, isn't there? Look, Emily, I'm not limiting myself to professors only, you know. No, that isn't quite what I meant. In fact, my experience of the professor type leaves me distinctly on the cold side. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I've blighted anything. There you go. Cheers. Here, I wonder if you could help me. Yeah. Do you know uh, Mr Langton? He lives round here. Yeah, I know him. Uh, you're not looking for money from him, are you? No, nothing like that. Oh, good job, cos you'd have a long walk, mate. He lives in Holland, see? Oh, well, I've missed him then, have I? Yeah, by a long chalk. Oh, two years now. Mind you, his partner, that's his partner that was. He lives up the road there, uh, number 11. Then there's his missus, that's his missus that was. She lives local as well. Uh, who's asking? Oh, it's all right. It's just a friend of a friend sort of thing. I'll go round there in a bit and get the rest of my stuff what I can mm. carry. Well, if you're sure, love. Oh, I'm sure. I'll bring his flipping neck. He's gone and slid off to the Legion, hasn't he? Do you not think he's coming back, then? Eh? Well, I said a mark will for you. Ah, oh, well, I'm going cross-eyed. I think you'd better. Yeah. We've been with the holiday break. It's a marvellous prize and it's a weekend for two. Is staying at a four-star hotel in wonderful sunny Blackburn. Turns your books round and the holiday quick is your first card. And it's eyes down. Your first number is two and six. Twenty-six. Cheers. Okay, see ya, pal. Stan's card. Uh, it's in, it's my flipping card. I could swear that was Stan's card. Hilda, it was my card. I'd swear it in a court of law. I recognise my own mark, it's on the back. Listen, call me a lot of things, but I'm not a thief, you know. And that's Stan's card. Get it match yourself. Entirely correct. That's a winning ticket. Your chit's on his way, dear love. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Mr. Bateman. Oh, you babe, it's me again. Right, I've got your thing ready. Couldn't read your writing in one or two places, so I hope I've made some intelligent guesses. Well, I want you to word it properly anyway. Yeah, I've done that on all. How much are you? Just 250. Well, I haven't got it. I'll have to cash a cheque in the pub. So I think yeah, you'd better come with me just to make sure, don't you? You've got some cheek. Yeah, it's a failing. And I think you're weakening. Come and have a drink. You look after Tracy. Mm, but I think it's her mother wants minding. And where the heck do you think you've been? I don't like bingo. It hurts me neck looking down. I thought you was in the bar there. The beer in that bar is poison. I wouldn't drink that. I told you that. Sorry, it's better, love. I won't feel so. Oh, Tarver, anyway. Hey, did you come up? Oh, she did all right. I never. I won't all, I You never? I did. A weekend in Blackpool, you know. Oh, hey, but it's better than a parking oh, eye in yeah. Hear that? There's one on your card, that was. Oh, Elder, if I hear that again, and I did hear it. Yes, you did. 
once more and I'll drain you. You might have thought it was your card. Hey, it won't have flaming card. See, see, it's all Tell you what, it's livened up You'll in here. What, what do you drink? And I'll see you up to right, so we'll... Oh, oh cash a check. People are thief. You want someone to back it up? Oh, I know what I know. And I know this. I'll have you for slander. Here, you out. Come on. Oh, fells, fells. You'll have no joy of that holiday, Vera Duckworth. You hear what I'm saying? You'll have no joy of it. Ooh. It's not the invisible man I'm writing to, you know. Not another. Here, try this one. Right. You have that. Oh, yeah, that's better. We have got some better ones, you know, if you want to pay a bit more. We've even got them that write underwater. <laughs> oh, dear, look. I'll settle for this. But if I do get the urge to write to, to the milkman, you know, while I'm in the bath, I'll know where to come. Ta-da, <laughs> look. ta Mr. Turpin. Oh. How are you feeling now? Well, I've just had another two aspirin, so I'll probably feel all right in a bit. Been saying that since we opened. I know. Ah, give us 20 bags, will you, love? It's not good for you, you know. My dad gave up. Oh, well, I'm very sorry to hear it. Because if there's one thing I hate, it's somebody who can do something I can't. You could if you really wanted to. Well, I don't really want to. Now then, are you satisfied? Now, will you get me them cigarettes, or I'll come round and get them myself? Honestly, I don't know how you stand it. I really don't. There's only one thing to do with kids as bright as her first thing in the morning, that's throttling. Are you all right? No, she's got flu coming on. Well, you ought to be upstairs with your feet up, oughtn't you? Yes, well, it's not that easy, is it? I said I'd be all right on my own. Oh, don't be so daft. The place won't fall down without you, you know. I know. But... And you don't want to take any notice of what Fairclough says. He wasn't very quick off the mark when Rita walked out and left you in the lurch, was he? I'll see how I go on. Oh, all right, suit yourself. But I know what I'd do. See you. Bye. Oh, by the heck. It's all right for some, isn't it? So they tell me. You're going to have to shift off there in a minute, you know. I've got plenty to do, even if you haven't. Hilda, you never was a match for the sun when it comes to brightening folks' mornings. But even you seem to be excelling yourself this morning. What's up with you? Don't crack on, you haven't heard. Heard what? Well, it's kick a flaming oggy week again, isn't it? Well, it can't be out I've done. I've only just got in. No, Vera Flaming Duckworth. What's she been up oh, to? Oh, you might well ask. I am doing. Well, she's only diddled me and Stan out of holiday to Blackpool, hasn't she? She what? At Bingo last night. We won this holiday and Vera Duckworth reckons she did. Hang on a minute. It's a bit early even for me yet. If you won it, what's it got to do with Vera Duckworth? Well, she were holding the winning card for my Stan. Too heavy for him, were it? No, she were marking it for him because he'd had to slip out for a few minutes. And she reckoned it was hers what had come up? Yeah, she did. Well, it's your word against hers then. But what's wrong with my word? Nothing, nothing at all. It's just that if she's got the winning card and she's got the prize, I would say she's got an awful lot going for her myself. Oh, that's right, go on. You put the boot in and all. Why not everybody else's? So that's where the evening paper got to. Oh, I was just having a quick look, Mrs Walker, see if I missed out last night. Oh, we're still in the ranks of the homeless, are we? You better not let Betty hear you say that. Seeing as it's her home I'm stopping at, tell her find somewhere else, that is. Not that I'm having much luck. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, haven't you? I mean, it is more usual to find a new place before you leave the old. Bring the paper back when you're finished with it. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh. oh, dear, I've gone all light headed. Look, it's daft, is this? What are you trying to do? Wait till you pass out so I have to carry upstairs? Because if you are, you've got another thing oh, coming. I think it might be better if I did go and have a bit of a lie down. What have I been saying all morning? Now, come on. Up them stairs. Oh, I shall have to let Mr Fairclough know. I can use the phone, you know. Uh, yes. Now, up them stairs and put your feet up. And I'll come up in just a minute and see if you want it. Oh, the way I feel at the moment, I could probably sleep for a week. You won't forget to ring Mr Fairclough. Just leave it to me, will you? I don't know what I'd do without you. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, hello. What are you doing home at this time? I just popped over me washing. I can get it done during my dinner hour. Well, there's nothing wrong with my washing machine, you know. No, I know, but I can get it dry while I'm there. I know, can't I? <laughs> Sort yourself, love. Hey, you've not seen that coat of Brian's, have you? The one he wears for work. Only I can pop it into the cleaners while I'm out. It could stand up on its own. Oh, I took it. Have. Yeah, yesterday. It's been lying around for the best part of a week, hasn't it? Well, you might have asked first. 
Well, I never thought, did I, love? I mean, you said it wanted cleaning, so I took it. What's wrong with that? Well, it's Brian's, isn't it? What difference does that make? I've always took his things to clean us for him. Before we were married, yeah. Look, I'm always trying to be helpful. Can't I do anything without you getting it into your head that I'm poking my nose in where it's not wanted? Look, you don't have to rush off on my account, lovey. I'm quite enjoying the company. Look, Betty, don't think I'm not grateful, because I am. Mm. It's just that I think I'd be better off in my own place, that's all. Okay. Heck. This Dan Johnson. He must have something going for him. He has. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, love. When was the last time you took me for a night out? Go on, tell me. Well, we come here most nights, don't we? Oh, I need mean a proper night out. Well, go on, I'm waiting. I, I don't know, do I? No, you don't, cos you'd need the memory of an elephant, wouldn't you? Couldn't even sit with me for half an hour last night. You had to go sloping off for a drink like some great steaming hippopotamus. Oh, very drop, will you? What's done's done, isn't it? If you had out about you, you'd be round there sorting her out instead of burying your head in a pint pot. Well, maybe she told the truth. Maybe it was her car. She wouldn't know the truth if it jumped up and bit her on the nose. Hey, pipe down, will you? Be careful what you're saying. Pipe down? You don't think I'm scared of Vera Duckworth, do you? Maybe not, but I don't fancy her Jack. He'd make men's me to me. Ooh, after what you done last night, Stanley, you can thank your lucky stars. I haven't done it already. It really is the root of all evil, isn't it? What, bingo? No. Money, big prizes, something for nothing. Nothing is more certain to bring out the worst in people. Well, it doesn't take much to bring out the worst in Hilda Rogan at best of times. She'd found somebody to row with at an Arvish festival. Hey, up, look where the wind's blowing in. Complaining, are you? Try me. Later. For now, I'll uh, settle for a big foaming pipe. You know, there's nothing up my way driver to give you a thirst. I've thought of nothing else since I left here. Nothing? I tell a lie. I should hope so. <laughs> How are things then? I'm homeless, aren't I? I've left my flat. You what? <coughs> well, they give me no choice, did they? Either be a good girl and do as I'm told, or up the road and nobody pushes me around. Where are you stopping? We're Betty for the time being. Betty? Right. Oh, you know. Oh, you can wipe that smile off your face, love. You'd not get past the front gate. How long are you planning on stopping there, then? Well, no longer than I need to. But it's not easy, though, you know. A couple of places sounded all right, but by the time I got round to ringing up, they'd gone, hadn't they? Perhaps I can help. You? Well, I can be having a look while you're tied up here. Got tonight's paper? What chance have I had to get out? Oh, is this place I can pick one up? This time. Corner of Victoria Street, I should think. I'll be right back. Oh! Do you go to this trouble for every barmaid in distress? What barmaid in distress? I'm the one with nowhere to kip tonight. Mavis! Mavis! Hello, Mr. Fairclough. I was just making myself a cup of coffee. You do realise, of course, that somebody could have unscrewed that till and been halfway down the M6 by now. Where is Mavis? She's in bed. In bed? I think she's got flu coming on. She'd stay down here much longer. I reckon she would have keeled over. And she went to bed just like that, without a word to anybody? Not exactly. She did ask me to give you a ring, but I didn't think there was much point. You didn't think there was much point? Doing all right on my own, aren't I? If I want to know anything, I can always ask Mavis. She's not exactly the other side of the world, is she? And what about when the evening papers come in and the kids are let out of school? You need eyes in the back of your head to stop them filling their boots. <laughs> like to see him try. Well, they won't get the chance. I'm going to get somebody else in. Which is what I should have done in the first place. Yeah, I know. I should be getting back, you know. Oh, come on, don't be so miserable. You've time for a quick one, haven't you? Your big mouse mate keeping her head down, is she? You wouldn't be talking to me by any chance, would you, Hilda? Well, you are Vera Duckworth's mate, aren't you? She can't have that many. Hilda, if you're still going on about that bingo win, do me a favour, drop it. I keep telling her, don't I? You can just tell her from me. Nobody puts one over on Hilda Ogden and gets away with it. Nobody. Tell her yourself. I'm not Vera Duckworth's lackey. Yours neither. What would you like to drink, my sweet? A lager and lime. <laughs> a lager and lime. And uh, half a bit of please, Betty. OK, lovely. Well, come on, kid, cheer up. I'm paying. Mm. Do you know, I've had a flaming bellyful, Bert. I really have. Oh, come on, you don't want to take any notice of Hilda Ogden? It's not Hilda Ogden, it's Gail. Gail, why? What's well, she been up to? It's this way that she has, and making me feel that everything I do is wrong. Brian again, right? Now, come on, what is it this time? Well, you know that jacket he's got, the one he goes to work in? Yeah, well, what about it? Well, it's been hanging around the house for three days, waiting to go to cleaners. So I thought I'd do her a favour and drop it in. Without telling Gail, I suppose. Look, she wasn't there to say oh too. Look, you've got to face it, love. He's her husband now, you know. 
Not you and Albert. Look, I, I'm not joking. I've had enough. I really have. Now, look, you've got to let them find their own feet, right? I mean, we had to, didn't we? And come on, you've not done so bad, have you? Ludlow Avenue. Right, I've got that. I'll be round as soon as I can. See you later. Tra. Well? It's not gone. Right, then, what are you waiting for? Well, I can't go now, can I? I thought you fancied it. Well, I can't just walk out, not with a bar full of customers. If it's Mrs Walker you're bothered about, I'll have a word with her. Two minutes of the old Dan Johnson charm, you'll be out that door like grease lightning. <laughs> Thanks all the same. I think it's best if I do my own dirty work. <clears throat> Mrs Walker, could I have a word? Certainly, dear. What is it? I've just been on the phone about a flat. That's all right. I'll put your money in the box. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, I will pay for the call, but uh, I could do with nipping off half an hour to see it like. When? Well, as soon as possible. Well, you can't go now, that's for sure. Well, if you leave it well after three, it could have gone. They get snapped up very quick if they're anything like. You're in a bit of a rush, aren't you? Well, I want to get fixed up as soon as I can. It's only fair to Betty. It's been very good of her putting me up like she has, but the least I can do is get myself off her hands as quickly as I can. I must say, I find your concern for Elizabeth very touching. Very touching indeed. Well, if you must go, go at two when we're finished serving your lunches. Thanks, Mrs Walker. Thanks a lot. Hey, where the heck have you been? I've got a bit of a problem, darling. Just a bit of one? Yeah, it's Mavis. She's gone down with the flu. Mavis has? Yeah, and that flipping little kid didn't say a dicky bird. I've only just found out by accident. So why are you telling me all this? Well, I need somebody over there fast, like this afternoon. And you think I might just be that somebody? Look, I wouldn't ask you if I wasn't desperate, love. I know you've got accustomed to being a lady of leisure nowadays. Oh, yes, I have. It's only for a couple of days. All right. I'll do it. Just for you. You've got a funny look in your eye. Me? What have you got up your sleeve? What could I possibly have up my sleeve? There is something going on in that little red head of yours. As if. <laughs> I don't want them, not in a packet. It's all we've got, Mr Tatlock. But haven't you got any loose? I know, but I want two ounces. If I have them too long, they get sticky. It's all we've got. We're waiting for some new ones to come in. These won't go sticky. I should think they won't at price you're charging. You'll have these, then? No, I won't. I'll go to Duffins. Be sure to have some there. Hello, Albert. Hello, Mrs Fairclough. What can I do for you? Well, it's more a matter of what I can do for you, from what I've heard. Oh, you've come to give us an hand, have you? Well, that's one way of putting it. Mm. He's a bit of a fuss pot, Mr Fairclough, isn't he? Just like my dad. You reckon? Is she upstairs? Mavis, yeah. She is. Well, I'd better go up and say hello. I think she's trying to get some sleep, though. That's all right, love. Only she'll go mad if she knows I'm down here and I haven't been up to show my face. Mrs Fairclough? Yeah? You wouldn't just knock the kettle on as you go through, would you? I'm dying for a cuppa. Right. Is that you? Are we expecting Warren Beatty? No, I thought it might be Louise. What are you doing here? Catching your flu if I come any nearer. That's why I'm stopping here. No, I thought I'd cheer you up, but it looks as if I'm wasting my time. How are you? Well, I'm a bit better now. I'm in bed. But... Oh, I felt it awful. Mm. I think it'd have collapsed if I'd carried on much longer. Yeah. Well, you're in right place. What about the shop? Has Mr Fairclough found somebody? He has. Oh, good. Well, it can't have been easy at such short notice. No. Uh, do I know who it was? You're looking at her. You? Well, don't look so surprised. After all, it is an emergency. Oh, I am glad. I mean, Louise is very nice and she's got bags of confidence. Oh, she's got that all right, yeah. But I'm happy now you are here. Yeah. Well, can I get you anything before I go back to the sweatshop? Yeah, I don't think so. Thanks, all the same. Right. Well, I'll nip up and see you again, you know. Yeah. But I'd better get down and see what she's got lined up for me. All right. This must be the place. Yeah. What do you reckon, then? A bit pricey for what it is. 
Well, everything's priced you these days, darling. The question is whether you're getting what you want. If you are, it's worth every penny. I've seen worse. Something up? Yeah. Just a thought. What about? I was reading one of Mrs. Walker's magazines this morning. One of them with big houses, big gardens, swimming pools, the lot. What about them? No. Just come back to me then. Just then when I walked into this place. One porky little room. Share of a bathroom. <laughs> Bet Lynch, this is your life. Yeah, but you've got to ask yourself, are they happy with their big houses and their big gardens and the big bills that go with them? Oh, I have. I keep coming up with the same answer, don't I? They are. You don't need a big house to be happy, darling. It's people that count. People like you, you mean? I think I'm more fun than a big garden, don't you? It's early days yet. <laughs> but what did you have to go and pick a fight with her for? She is trying. Yeah, very trying. Anyway, I didn't pick a fight with her. She just said she'd taken your coat to the cleaner and I asked why she hadn't said something to me first. But what difference does it make who took the coat to the cleaners? It's not the coat that's important, Brian. But what did you have her over there for, then? Because it's none of her business. Like everything that happens between you and me, it's none of her business. I know that, love. But there are some things we can't keep from her. Or me, Dad. Not when we're all under the same roof. Look, I know it's not easy, love, but we've just got to try and make the most of it. It can't be easy for them, either. Yeah, well, I've tried, honestly, I have. And I don't think I can stand much more of it. I really don't. Oh, so the grub's come out of the apple, has it? Oh, shut it, Hilda. I'm talking to the dummy, not the ventriloquist. You won't mean me by any chance, would you? Oh, no, I'm talking to myself, aren't I? Like I might just as well have been doing last night. Now, look, Hilda, I won that holiday fair and square, and you know I did. On my stance card. On my card? Oh, yes, so you keep saying. But we've only your word for it, haven't we? And we all know how much that's worth. Look, Hilda, if you vote to say, spit it out, before it flaming well chokes you. Right, I will. You're a flaming liar, Vera Duckworth, that's what you are. Oh, listen, I'm warning you. I've got witnesses, I have. And so did I have witnesses last night and all. Witnesses who've seen me give you that card to play. And what difference does that make? Hilda, if your stand had to go lolloping off like a demented camel looking for water, you'd have had none of this aggro. My stand has got more right to go on that holiday than her flipping Jack any day of the week. He never even went near the bingo hall. Oh, well, if that's all that's bothering you, that's so unsettled, isn't it? Eh? Well, I'll take your stand with me. How does that so? Well, you know what you can do, don't you? You can stick your rotten holiday. And I hope he chucks it down for you. Flaming stair rods. She didn't have show me up in that street, didn't she? <laughs> what on earth was that racket out there, Mrs. That Bennett? Mrs. Walker is what is known as a good old up and downer, just like old times, isn't it? Well, who the heck was it? Uh, between Mrs. Hilda Ogden and Mrs. Vera Docker. I might have known. Hilda, yeah, what's she been up to? Well, it seems that she told Mrs. Duckworth exactly what she thought of her for thieving her bingo prize. Exactly what she thought of her. I told her leave it be, didn't I? Well, you should complain. Why? Well, I thought Vera was very generous under the circumstances. What? Well, she said if Hilda felt so strongly about it, she'd take you to Blackpool instead of that Jack. Oh, what? <laughs> what did Hilda have to say to that? Well, I didn't catch it exactly. Not exactly what she uh. said, but it was something to the effect that she thought that Mrs. Duckworth's offer was very generous, but under the circumstances, she could not accept her kind and generous <laughs> offer. I'll bet she did. <laughs> Why can't you take the feet like a lady? What? You're Hilda. You would have something to worry about oh. there, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate, love. Hello. Hey, they just had a right up and down of them two. Who? Hilda Ogden and Vera Duckworth. About that bingo prize. Oh, who won then? Uh, Vera, I reckon, on points. <laughs> oh, what, what's that? Chops. Found them in the fridge. Oh, they were for tomorrow, love. It were fish fingers for tonight. Oh, well, I didn't know, did I? Well, you could have asked. Well, if that's all the thanks I get for having your tea ready when you come home from work, you can get your own. Well, nobody asked you to, Gail. What's going on? Hey, hang on a minute. I mean, does it matter whether we have chops today or tomorrow? No, not really. All I'm saying is it would have been nice to have asked. You're a fine one to talk, aren't you? All right, knock it off. The pair of you. Look, Mum, Gail's only trying to help. I wouldn't have thought it was a major crime. Well, nobody said it was. Can't I do out in my own house anymore without everybody jumping down my throat? No, nobody's jumping down your throat. Well, look, you look just... just give it a rest, will you? Right. I'll go and give her hand. We can't go on like this, Dad. 
Let's try and get down the bend. You're joking. It's not doing much for me, neither. What are we going to do? Well, I should have thought that was obvious. We may find a place of our own. Don't think I haven't thought about it. Well, there's some very nice little semis going at the uh, new estate. You know, top of green water there. And uh, what are we going to use for money? Oh, come on. There's a youngster at our works going in for one, and he can't be earning much more than you. And I mean, well, you've got your foreigners, haven't you, and your overtime, and Gail's working. Yeah. That, we couldn't afford all like that, Dad. Well, they're not just the big semis, you know. They're building some little ones as well. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. My dad's just telling us about some new houses they're building on top side of Greenwalker State. Oh, what kind of houses? Well, they're only little ones. Little ones? They have to be rabbit touches for you two to be able to afford them. How do you know what we can afford and what we can't? Well, go on. Can you? No. No, we can't. Right, come on, sit down, stop mad and get it before it goes cold. Potatoes. Yeah, that's What the hell time do you call this? Don't you start. I've had enough with that young Louise. She is like a human dynamo. If you stand still for five minutes, she's likely to pay. Yeah, I knew you'd never stand the pace. What pace? All this jet setting around, you know, corporations, saunas, and laundrette three times a week. Yeah. Must be awful to be one of them millionaires lying around the Bahamas all day with nothing to do. Hey, can't you finish before this? Because I'm starving. And whose idea was it that I went back, Leonard? Tell me that. Come on. Yeah. Right, tell love, I'll tell her. I only hope he's worth it. Follow. That, uh, that was Bet. Bet? Mm -hmm. I thought she'd been on her way in by now. Well, no, she was phoning today. She won't be in. Well, not tonight, anyway. She won't? No, she's got a splitting headache and said she couldn't face it tonight. Really? Does she take me for a complete fool? I mean, it's bad enough letting me down like this. But to insult me by thinking I'd swallow a silly excuse like that. Well, it's what she said, Mrs. Walker. Yes. Well, she isn't the only one who will be saying something when I see her, I assure you. Yeah. What's up, love? You've had us said two words all night. Been thinking, haven't I? What about? About what your dad said. About the houses. Well, don't. My man was right. We couldn't afford the front door. How do we know? First time buyers get a lot of help, you know. But we do know, Gail. So let's stop kidding ourselves. Brian, if I ever spend many more days like today, I'm likely to go round the bend. And we've got to start looking somewhere. I know we have. There's no harm in looking. OK, if it'll make you any happier. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Are these yours, by any chance? No. They were on the floor in the bathroom. Aren't you the lucky one? Well, I'd better take them back in that case, before I'm looking for something very peculiar. You, uh, you spotted any of the other tenants yet? Well, there's a bloke across the hall. I've seen his back a couple of times, but I've not seen nobody who would wear knickers like them. I'm very sorry. Well, keep your eyes skinned, eh? The pig. <laughs> Come and get it. Well, that looks very tasty. Where's yours? That is my breakfast, love, in the interests of the body slim and beautiful. You eat big lunches, then, do you? You're asking for a thick ear, mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice and crispy. Just like Mum does it. You did say Mum. That's right. She must be getting on. Hmm? Your Mum, she must be getting on in years. No, she is. It's not a dump, is it, Dan? I know it's not swish, but it's not a dump. No, of course it isn't, love. It's very cosy. I'll make it nice. You see if I don't. I'll pick it about two of them, OK? Yeah. Mm. Ta-ra. See you Ta later. Where are you going at two o'clock, then? Just to look at them houses, the building. Just to look. What, you both getting off work? Just to look? Wait till the weekend. They might be all... What? They might be all gone. You'll be sitting on more than you can chew, you know, Gail. Definitely you will. Have you any idea how much mortgage you're going to have to put down on a brand new house? Well, have you? There's no harm in looking, Ivy. It's better not to look at what you can't afford. It's old-fashioned wait until you can afford stuff, wait until you're past enjoying it. Maybe, but you know what they said, don't you? Income a pound, expenses 90p, result happiness. 
Income a pound and expenses one pound ten p result misery. I want a home of me own. Look, I know you do, love. Goodness me, it's only natural. There ain't a woman living that don't want her own home. But don't go paying to hire browse for it, eh? That's all I'm saying. Louise. Louise. Yeah, some mornings I feel that terrible. I feel as if my body must have died during the night and there's only my brain left alive. And I lie there and I think, what if they buried me alive and nobody noticed my eyes were still moving? You're having me on. I yeah, you know. Hey, uh, you'll take my advice. Sup yourself to death till you're 25. Cos after that, it's all downhill. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Hello, love. Hey, you wouldn't like to fill in for me, would you, at why I work today, kid? Not again. I know, I have been coming in a bit lately. See ya. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. She's a cake, isn't she? And the rest. How's the patient? Worse, if anything. Oh, don't say that. i better go and see her. Are you still coping? Yeah. Some of the kids tried it on this morning, like, knowing I was as good as on my own, especially Linda Butler. She can't bear having to take orders from me, just cos I took a lad off her once. Listen, you tell her we've got a waiting list for paper girls, and if she don't behave herself... I did. Oh. You are coping, aren't you? Morning, Mr Roscoe. Daily Mail, isn't it? No, it's me. Wait. How are you? I think I'm dying. Don't be so sick. Oh, no, my head's like a fuzzball. I ache in every bone in my body. On top of that, I feel sick. Oh, I'd be glad to die. Have you had any breakfast? No. I couldn't keep anything down, even if I wanted it. Well, surely you could manage a drink. Oh, well, maybe I could just manage a sip of water, right. but not cold, just dead. Mavis? Yeah? Nothing? Oh, I don't want to be a nuisance. Oh, you're not being, no. Louise seems to be coping. Oh, yes, she is, yes. Oh, well, that's something. Yes. I'll tell you what you could do for me. What? <laughs> could, could you just puff these pillows up, see if I can manage to raise my head? A minute, love, just a minute. There you are. How's that? Oh, thank you. That's much better. You're very kind. Well, it's the least you can do when somebody's at death's door. Anything else? No, not at the moment. Just the water. That, but not, not cold. I know. Just... Ed. Go oh, on, Tech. I'm, I can easy get some more. Oh, tell her. Sig is company on the road. It's pretty lonely, isn't it, your job? You're on your own a lot, sitting in that cab. Lots of time to think. Mm. Funny. Don't see you as a thinker, more as an action man. No, oh, I have my dreams, darling. Just like anyone else. Where are they, then, your dreams? The big one, the real jumbo. To have enough money not to work. You have to go all the big race meetings, not just here in this country, but all over the world. That would just about be paradise. I didn't know you were a betting man. Oh, well, I'm not off the course. There's something about a race meeting. What's the word? Opulent. That's it. Opulent. Good clothes. Style. I like style. You'll have to win pools then, won't you? Or marry a rich widow. I'm neither. Yeah, I know. Disappointing, isn't it? Oh, well, I better get going, love. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my job and you're going to have to keep me. I wouldn't mind. You would. See you about four. You definitely will call on your way back to London, won't well, you? Of course I will. You're not very trusting, are you? Oh, well, be lucky. Happy birthday. You don't look a day over 40. Dad Sweet talker. <laughs> No sign of bet yet, I see. No, Mrs. Walker. It really is too much, you know. I gave her free time yesterday afternoon, then she rings up last night with a patently false excuse. Well, she might have been ill. Oh, I love to say yes, ill, no. You know, it is quite amazing the change that has come over her from the hard bitten girl we know behind mm. this bar, and suddenly she's a wide eyed girl again. Mm. I'm tempted to say there is no fool like a mature fool. Well, I think she knows what she's doing, Mrs. Walker. Does she? 
Does she, Elizabeth? Ah. Yes, Mr. Zetter. I've not come for so much to eat. That is your privilege. What kind of soup have you got on today? Onion soup. No pea. Onion. Well, that'll be onion then, won't it? Although it's not something I'd make soup of. It is a French classic, Mr. Tadlock. So is mixed kludgy, but I'll bet you're not going to have one of them in here. <laughs> oh, then. Oh, well, but you're going to have a rum. No, thanks. Well, I'll have half a mile. Oh, but you're a very reasonable fella. I know that. <laughs> right, then. So that's three lagers, two soaps and a meat and potato pie. Three lagers, Betty Love. Right. And can I order some grub? Yeah, I'll get your drinks first. <laughs> OK. Oh, hello, Stanley. I do. Where's Trouble and Strife, then? Oh, she's in the kitchen helping Mrs Walker. Bet didn't turn up for this. Ah, well, I hope she stops in there and all. Wait, Vera. Well, she's not, but Trouble, that one. Mm. Oh, oh, hey, oh. Hey, is that your new spring outfit, Hilda? Your soup, Mr Tatlock. Where's the roll and butter? Did you ask for a roll and butter? I don't have to ask for one. It's included with it. You have a look at your menu. Well, you could have asked. Uh, get it right, Hilda. Look, shut up, you, and leave my husband alone. Leave him alone. I won't touch him with rubber gloves. I mean, he lives with you, don't he? Oh, you're dead common, you are. You're known for it. Folk have to wipe their feet when they come out of your house. Mm. Well, nobody would go in yours. They'd be frightened of catching summer. Hang on a minute. You can fight all you want outside, but not in here, right? <laughs> common as muck. <laughs> I'll send you a postcard from Blackpool, Hilda. Don't rub it in, dear. Hey, don't you start. Now, she started this. I won that old fair and square. Not on your card, like she's saying. And I'm saying I'm finishing it. Well, in here, anyway. What you do anywhere else is up to you. Now, come on, three lagers. Uh, well, I want a meat and potato pie and two soaps. Uh, oh, and tell key old Kate to give a sticky thumbs out and all. Oh. Hey, they're like cat and dog, aren't they? Two oh, cats. I'm not going to bingo again. She's been up half the night calling beer her names. Never repeated herself once. Amazing. Women have a talent for that kind of thing, you know. Hey, fellas do the fair share, you know. Hello, fans. Betty. Hang oh. on a minute, you. Where have you been? Do you know what the time is? Well, I got carried away, didn't I? Doing what? You've got a dirty mind, you have. Cleaning my flat. It's like a new pin. You could eat off shovel if I had one. Well, you've been missed a lot. That is the story of my life, love. Oh, my. Hey, haven't she shacked up with that driver, fella? Read William Hickey tomorrow, lover. I had a few birds around the country when I was driving. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> there was one big red head at um, Scunthorpe. What? Why you didn't borrow something a bit better than this old heap? Hey, don't let Rodder you saying that. This old heap is his pride and joy. <coughs> you see? There's an act to it. <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> hey, isn't it posh? You what? It's a shambles. Yeah, but you can see what it's going to look like. Come on, let's go find somebody. Hey, I thought we'd just come to look. We can get a brochure or something. Come on. Gone to the bank and I was a bit pushed for time and I'm on my own. Oh. Uh, how's Mavis? You hear that, Louise? She's feeling a lot better. In fact, she's sitting up. Well, would you credit that? Well, was she really bad then? Bad? I'd given her up this morning. In fact, I was looking through yellow pages for an undertaker. Ah, oh, poor lass. Poor lass, my eye. What about me? It's every five minutes, right? It's time for me tablet, right? And my water bottle gone cold. Oh, she would have done the same for you. I know, but she'd enjoy doing it for me. I don't enjoy doing it. Well, there's one thing we've all got to be thankful for. What's that? That you didn't take up nursing as a career. <laughs> See you. You're right. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. <laughs> Is there something wrong? Do you not like Mavis or something? She's my best friend. You wouldn't think so. She's been really ill. Yeah, I know she has. But she's making a meal of it like she does with everything, love. It's just her way. She's been very good to me. 
Very good. Yes, Albert. What the heck are you doing here? Well, I'm sorry, but Mavis is poorly sick. Oh. Uh, have you got the last night's gazette? I have. There we are, young man. Right. How much? Well, it says on front, 10p. But this is last night. You're not selling this to anybody else. Come on, 10p, Albert. All right. Mavis should let me have it for half price. I'll tell you something, shall I? Yeah. It's been a real pleasure coming in here lately. Albert? What? Would you like to go up and see Mavis, being as you're such a friend of hers, only she's a bit short on company? Right, I will. Come on, this way. Mavis! You've got a visitor! A gentleman. Come in. Oh, it's you, Mr. Tatlock. Mike, you got a funny colour. Oh, I thought it were looking better, actually. What's supposed to be up with you? Oh, it's gastric flu. Oh, you get a lot of complications from that. Can you? What sort of complications? Well, you name it. What, what are they giving you for it? I've got some tablets. They're antibiotics, I think. Oh, they won't do you any good, neither. And you got no grapes? No, I've, I've got some grape juice. Oh, well, what's it like? Well, it's very nice. Oh, well, I've never tasted that. Would you like to try some? No, wouldn't mind a drop. Where, where's your glasses? Oh, they're out in the kitchen. Kitchen? Oh. Yeah. Your face has gone a lot thinner. You're looking gaunt. Gorgeous. Don't you think so, Brian? They're not very big, are they? Small but beautiful. Oh, I agree. You won't find better value for money anyway. They're a bit close together. I mean, they're rather detached. Link detached. Oh, uh, is that what you call I think it's better not having much space between you and your neighbours. It's more friendly, isn't it? Exactly, Mrs. Tilsley. It gives you a feeling of community. Yeah, but, uh, supposing you don't like your neighbours. Can we have a look at the plots you've got left, please? Certainly you can. Just down this path. Oh, well, uh, I've got to get back to work, girl. I only said I'd be an hour. Another ten minutes won't matter. Especially when it might change your lives. Oh, Brian. Uh, just this way. Come on, Brian. All right. I wish I'd just locked up for the night. Mm. Oi. I say I wish I'd just locked up for the night. You shouldn't wish your life away, Betty, love. Oh, it's right what Mrs Walker says. You've got stars in your eyes. Don't be so daft at my age. You should see yourself. Jealous, are you? No, I'm just concerned for you, love. Well, don't you think I am? Well, just a bit. Not sure. I should hope not. How do you fancy having a look at my new flat? It's on your way home. Yeah, lovely. Right. No need to bother buying me a Prezi. A Prezi? What for? Well, it is usual and customary when somebody moves into a new home. Oh, sorry. I didn't know about that custom. Go on, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, dear. Yeah. I wonder, could you go and help Mrs Ogden to tidy up in the yeah. kitchen? If somebody doesn't set the pace for us, she'll be here all afternoon at time and a half. Oh. I'm sure Beck can manage. Yes, I will, Mrs Walker. Mrs. Walker? Well, I've left it until we closed, so as not to embarrass you. Left what, Mrs. Walker? The little matter of your being an hour late today, which meant that I had to employ Mrs. Ogden at considerable expense. Yes, well, it was an oversight, Mrs. Walker. I didn't realise what time it had got to. Bed. Your life outside these walls is your own business. Within limits, of course. But when it comes to affecting your job... I've only moved, Mrs Walker. I've not opened a tripe stall. When one is clutching at straws, there's little time for anything else. Dan is not a straw, Mrs Walker. I hope not, Bet. Sincerely, I hope not. Hello, Mrs Walker. Hello. She's off soon, isn't she? Yeah, her and Mavis have an arrangement. Early in, early off. Oh, well, as long as they're happy. Uh, Len, 
Yes. I've been thinking. Oh. You know, uh, I think I've got the taste for this place again. <laughs> you oh. know, I'd, I'd forgotten how I'd missed the chat and the faces, even Albert Tatlock's, you know. Uh, so I wouldn't mind coming back. I'm a bit bored at home. Full time? Well, I didn't say that. And there'd be no point, would there? I mean, there's two of them here. No, I'd be more supervisory, a consultant. Uh, yeah, like a Bobby's job, yeah. I knew there was something on your mind yesterday, you know. Well, it'll stop me going into mischief and being bored and willful. Mm, well, it's up to you, of course, only... Uh... I wonder how Mavis is going to take the boss coming back. Not to mention little Louise. Oh, they'll just go on working as a team. You've got it all worked out, haven't you? I have. Rita! Rita! Oh, Mavis is calling you. Ignore her. Oh, the lovely Betty. Thanks a lot, my pleasure, though. Hey! What's this, Bette Lynch? It's my birthday today. What date? May the 1st. Oh, of course it is. Completely slipped my mind, lover. Well, these can be my prezzy, can't they? Keeping it a bit quiet, I. You can do at 35. Haughty. Rubbish. <laughs> anyway, he remembered, didn't he, Dan? Well, sort of. Seen as we were in card shop when I told him. Uh, what do you think of it, then, my flat? Very nice, love. It will be when I've sorted it out. I feel much freer in it, you know, Betty. Yes, I dare say. Don't start. Start what? Knocking it. Look, I wish you the best of luck, love. I know, and I wish you all wouldn't. I feel like I'm going in hospital for a serious <laughs> operation. <laughs> hey, what's that? It's only down. Oh. Watch you, buddy. Hello, love. Hello, darling. Did you miss me, then? Every second. <laughs> yes, well, I think I'll get up, then. No need to go rushing off on my account, but it's just oh. a flying visit. <laughs> Aren't you stopping for a meal? Oh, I can't, love. It's going to be ten before I get home as it is. Yeah, of course. Yes, well, I'd better be going, love. I've got a bit of shopping to do. Anyway, I'll see you tonight. Bye. <clears throat> Ta-ta. Uh, ta ta, -ta. ta, -ta love it. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Are you sure you've not got time for me? Oh, definitely. Well... Cup of tea, then. I won't be seeing you for... please. OK, then. Quick cup of tea. Oh, I brought you some ciggies. Oh, you didn't need. Dan? Yeah? You said you'd be late getting home. That's right. London's home, is it? Yeah, of course. I'm a Londoner. I was baptised in the Thames, darling. No, I didn't mean that. Well, what did you mean? Well... Home's supposed to be where the heart is, isn't it? Oh, so they say. You've not got divided loyalties in that respect, have you? Between here and London? Well, you see, there's nothing else for it. I'll have to admit it. And maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. <laughs> You're a crafty <laughs> devil, aren't you? I'm a man of distinction, love. Now, be quick with that cup, Ray. I'm parked on the yellow line. Hello, I'm very pleased you're looking old. Do you know what? You look like one of them holiday posters. <laughs> Is Ivy in? Yeah. I'm in here. Oh, we've got something to tell you. What? You tell everyone. We've settled a plot. You've what? We've put a deposit on a plot for a new house. What? One of them I told you about? Yeah. Well, where did you get money from? I went to the bank, didn't I? Oh, Ivy, it's lovely. It's ever so nice and compact. It's guest central heated, fitted kitchen, turf lawns. It's the brochure. Hey, how much? You might well ask. Brian? Uh, 16,000. Sixteen thousand? How the blooming heck are you two going to be able to afford we that? We can. If we both keep working, we've worked it out, we can afford the mortgage. If we get one. We will. I feel sure we will. Hey, just think in a couple <laughs> of months we're going to be living at 16 Willow Crescent. <laughs> it's <sound posh. laughs> It's a ridiculous amount of money for you two to be paying. You should have stopped her, Brian, shouldn't he, Bert? Yeah, you're taking a lot on, you know, son. I couldn't stop her. And anyway, I'm uh, quite chuffed about it myself. Hey, let's have a look at the brochure, kid. They're very nice, love, aren't they? But that's not point, Bert. They don't know what they're doing. But they'll get into debt, they'll, they'll get into that much bother, and then you know what happened, don't you? What? Well, they'll start rowing, won't oh, they? Oh, come on, steady on. They've only just settled a plot, haven't they? I can see it coming, Bert. I remember Ralph's me and you used to have about money. And we weren't earning much either. We were only renting a talking tool down. We weren't buying a blooming mansion. Right, what do you want me to do? March upstairs and tell them to pack the bags? Because I'll tell you something, they wouldn't listen. And quite right. You know why? Because it's their lives, isn't it? It'd be their lives if they were planning to rob a bank, but you'd stop them doing that, wouldn't L you? Look, love, love. 
Do you know, the one thing I regret in my life, I mean, I never took any risks. No, I didn't. Everything that's happened to me, everything, it just happened. I never made it happen. Do you know, my dad even found me my job for me. I wouldn't care, I mean, I would have been quite happy being a, a draftsman. Didn't you take any risks marrying me? Well, I didn't have much choice in that either, did I? I mean, once you'd made up your mind you wanted to marry me, I mean... Oh, I see. Are you regretting it now? No, love. Not for one minute. But that's what I'm saying. We've got to just let them get on with it. Let them take risks. Like I should have done. Like I should have done that time when Jack Taylor wanted to go halves in a wireless shop. I mean, the rest's history now, innit? Telly comes in and he's halfway to being a millionaire, isn't he? No, love, I'll tell you something. Them two up there, they're quite capable of taking a few knocks. Know what I mean? Sure. I wish you were as sure as you are, Bert. Hey, I didn't say I was sure. No more than they are. Well, we find out if Brian and Gail can go ahead with their plans when we revisit Classic Coronation Street tomorrow at the same time. Plenty of plans up next in Doctor in Charge. Doctor in Charge.